let me tell you a little story. It's uh, it's the late 70s, and I'm doing three days on a little film called Beyond the Poseidon Adventure. You're welcome. And we were shooting nights, and I was taking some stuff to, you know, stay awake. So uh, it's about four in the morning, and I'm driving home, and I'm at the corner of Vineland and Delauded, if you know what I'm saying. Well, one thing leads to another, and I kill a wino with my car. Now... I'm, you know who? I, you know who's my boss? I, I don't have a boss except for the the cat upstairs. That man, the the main cat. And I hear a voice in my head, and it's and it's him. And he says, "Zayas, no one's around. Get the hell out of here." And that's him taking care of me. So I beat it out of there, but I still have a wino shaped dent in the front of my car. And I think. Who do I know who lives in the valley? Peter Lawford. That's who. So I fly to Peter Lawford's house. He's still in Encino because it was before the divorce. The problem is Peter has a statue in his front yard of him and Sammy Davis Jr. It's a recreation of the one sheet for salt and pepper. I'm in such a panic to get off the streets because the sun's coming up. I slam into the statue and demolish it. And that is why... Despite all the things that Peter did that disappointed Frank Sinatra, I'm the guy who broke his legs. <laughs> Stands out from the others. Yeah, very well endowed. <laughs> from KNSD to Nishimata, Roland Smith, and Joe Lazura Weather, KNSD First News at Four. Hello, everyone. I'm Margaret Radford in for Denise Yamada. A um, move over Superman, it no longer takes a male superhero to knock down the enemy. We visited the San Diego Comic Convention today and found that more and more comic heroes have brawn, brains, and breath. The comic convention always draws a crowd. People can't wait to get their hands on Superman, Spider-Man, and she. She? Her name means death in Japanese, and she's hot. But she's not a bimbo. She has intelligence. She has depth. She does not have the balloon boobs and the overly curvaceous body. She's realistic. Some people might dispute that, but the fact is, readers love her. And a growing number of fit and mighty don't mess with me powerhouses. Oh, yeah, I like tougher women, you know. I'm not explaining, like, more independent Women. The independence of them, that, because they don't need a man to bring them through everything. So. <laughs> Lady Death certainly doesn't need a man to help her solve problems. In one obvious way, she stands out from the others. Yeah, very well endowed. <laughs> very much so. <laughs> uh, we hear everything from... Does Lady Death's back hurt? Uh, and all sorts of other rude things. But once they read the story, they realize that she's very cool and she's more than a breast or two breasts or one just one big huge one. The stories are very well written and they give them a brain and things that weren't there 20 years ago. They're, but they still, still the sex is there because sex sells. But their creators, nearly all men, deny practicing a sex sells strategy. She does show skin, but I think tastefully. I mean, I'm going to keep the comic book tasteful. Personally, and that there's nothing more beautiful in the whole world than the female form. Wonder Woman has kept her form for some 50-some years, but some things never change. Teen boys are the primary readers of comic books, and many don't really like girls. I think that there is a little bit more acceptance for female heroes than there was, but still it's not an equivalent balance. Um, you know, I think it's reflective of our readership and, and sometimes of our creative pool, still being primarily male. Then again, Superman never had a swimsuit issue, and Lady Death does.
I'm sorry. Well, Alex, I love that video. I know that you cringe, but look how cute you and Francisca are. And guys, without, without further ado, or, or a don't, if you will, our friends, Brian and Francisca Polito. <laughs> Yay! What's up, Tucci family? Thank I'm you sorry. so much. I know. For... Debbie rolled her eyes, Francisca. She's like, you're one trick pony. I'm like, I play that once a year and I, I, I played it during COVID. You play it more than once a year. Well, I love you girls here. I love Francisco with your little chicken pot pot because I bet you did that, right? I know oh, yeah. that. I have one there too. I and, and it's so funny when they're like, Wonder Woman is like 57 years old. Then. 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 Wow, yeah. Like, oh my God, it's only. But so great to have you guys. We love you. Welcome, everyone, to Thursday Night Live with Billy and Debbie Tucci and, yeah, yeah. That's okay. and Brian Polito. Wonderful friends, uh, just compadres, family. Since we first met you in 1994, wow. Brian, I first met you in 1993 when I was at San Diego Comic Con. You had a table in small press. Yes. And you had you were exuding so much confidence. <laughs> and I and and true story, I went and you remember this story that I went, you know, you go to Marvel, you go to DC, you go to Dark Horse. You end up going to Image and and I'm here hawking my wares with the first 12 pages of She, like, mm -hmm. you know, She number 1. Yeah. And everyone I met, they were all like you know, this is the this is the height of the comic book editors. When they actually did yeah. edit at the time, but they had su they wielded such power, and they were so um, what, how do I say that? How were they? Were Maybe they, dismissive or yeah, assholes. They were just power hungry. Well, they were. They were. <laughs> they, they were condescending. Were condescending, drunk with power, and I, you know, where just, are they now, Billy? They're all probably they? selling life insurance. Not that where? there's anything wrong with it, but everyone hopefully, needs life insurance. <laughs> hopefully, they're selling life insurance. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so and then I remember I went walking then with my buddy Mark Sasso. Sasso, mm -hmm. what? Put your paid chat up. My pay chat. I don't know what you it's mean, called. A super chat. Super it's a chat. Super chat. Paid. They paid to have their comment up. Put it up. Put, Brian is one of your biggest fans. Evil one, two dollars. Thank you so much. Hey, it's Chris. What's up, Evil One, Chris? You lunatic! How you doing? I saw you. Dominating Brian Fife's time at Planet Comic Con. Ooh. I know you. <laughs> Chris. Thank you, bro. He's he's a he's a huge supporter of all of all of ours. Sure. He always, he, you, he's Chris. he he's just you know he's he's one of the old guard, right? If you will. He's very just, old. Uh, yeah, Chris uh, Chris Flum is definitely an OG. There's no doubt about it. Yep. OG. So so here's my story, and I'll I'll get to it. Um, we'll get back to the course. You know, to to back to. Well, to the beginning. Sorry. No more wine for you. Yes. What? Yeah. It's it's my great. my mother in law's birthday. Yeah, it's, it doesn't mean you need to be drunk. So yeah. I'm not drunk at all. Yeah. Here, drink some tea. And I know I'm not drunk because I said a toll. <laughs> what did you just say? A toll. A toll. Francisca, say a toll. A toll. So you're not drunk at all. Oh, you're not drunk at all. I am representing Whistle Pig tonight. Whistle Pig Rock. So much better what? than you. I know everyone is. Hang on. <laughs> what is what is Brian Polito? Oh, sorry, wrong, 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 one. wrong oh. ones. Hang on. Okay. What is that, Brian? Whistle Pig. I'm Whistle drinking pig. rye tonight. You'll notice in the background the cover of Evil Ernie Number no. One and a beautiful Julie Bell by uh, Julie Bell. Yes. That is so. Oh. I can I ask Brian a question? Yeah. So isn't there a restaurant called the the Pig and Whistle? I, there used it to was. be. There used to be one in Scottsdale. Um, there was. It was like a pork orientated restaurant. And the name escapes me. Still there. Could could still be there. Used to be in our so neighborhood. Did that, or did, did that originate at that restaurant? I don't know. I think that's Colorado. Is it Colorado? I don't know. Let me see. Well, know. it's good, right? And you're hitting that you're, you're hitting that bottle pretty hard. So well done, brother. Well right? done. Working it out. I saw hey, someone. Can I say hello to everybody real quick. We have Ronald Neal. We have Marcus Kellegrew. We have Death Metal Hero. Woo -woo -woo. He says, uh, right there, man. Oh, good choice, Brian. Death Metal Hero is always there for Keith and Comics. Got my hell with forbidden today. Oh, yay. Hell so pretty. I said hell with I said hell. Bitch. He's a hell with. Dude, what a hell bitch. She could be bitchy. 
It's true. She oh, she oh, 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 we got. Oh, uh, thank you very much, right here. Nexus video, my hill, which arrived last week. Awesome. I, I got my fucking package last week too. I haven't opened it yet, though. Because, you know, it. I, I, it's what well, you can find it. It's not my studio. Yeah. No. Get it, girl. And don't you forget that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys. So, so anyway, so getting back to it. So it's 1993, San Diego Comic Con. We're all young. And then I go like, well, let me go into the into the. <laughs> let me we're go. All young. We're all young. We're not anymore. Yeah, just, so poor, <laughs> so poor. Holy shit, so poor. My God, you know, like that was all the money. Yes, see something about that. Back, what? back when we were we were all very poor, but what, when we go back and think about it, mm. we had enough. It was kind of mm. wild. Yeah. We were actually just we were listening to the new U two documentary, and we must admit, although I'm a metalhead, I love U two, and I always have. And we're able to go back in time to right around that same time. And man, we had a studio apartment in uh, the Valley in California, and we actually had no furniture. We had furniture made out of cardboard that Francisca made. And yet I got it out of the garbage. <laughs> and yet I look back on those times as, as just a lot of fun. We had enough. I don't know. It, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, just like growing up, we didn't know we were poor, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you had. Oh, I did. Oh, you did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when the cars would get repossessed. Oh, that's right. Your dad's car. Your dad's car got do. repossessed. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a hint. And here's the thing. So my mother-in-law is a lot like Debbie, and she, like, like I said, when the first time when, when I, you know, when I met you, I'm a lot like my mother. Yes, you're a lot like your mother. So they're <laughs> kind of mom they're, came they're, first. Yeah, really, you married like, up is really the truth. That's yeah. what happened. Yeah. They're kind of like indoor girls, if you know what I mean, you know, so, but very beautiful, you know, all dressed to the nines always, stuff like that. And then like that picture I posted your mother from 1990 when I was in the army. So I missed that one. That was Lauren's birthday, I assume, it was October because the back, back of the picture says ni October 1990. Okay. Um, but so when I saw her mother, I'm like, oh my God, she's beautiful. Her mother's beautiful. And my friend's like, dude, you got to, that's, that's the one because she's going to be gorgeous when she gets older. <laughs> right, you know, you, you know. Stay so, on topic. Anyway, but you, so, you married Debbie instead. Is that what you're saying? I married Debbie instead. Yeah, it's instead my mother of her mother. I'm so, confused. Who hates me? My mother hates me. So why? <laughs> no, she doesn't hate me. She's she, you're full of crap. Does she not get me? What is it? Why are we discussing yeah, we're not, my mother? We're not discussing. Her 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 <laughs> so anyway, so guys mom, out there, I know everybody out there. Next anniversary, of course. This is what we were talking about. <laughs> Guy, I, I apologize. So, um. Anywho, so oh Scott, no, thank you, brother. Hey Scott, what's up? There he Hi, is. Scott. Everybody else. Hey, hello, everybody. What's up, Scott? We, we, great, great people out here. So Scott, guys, I hope you're feeling there, better. So now, yeah. Scott, no, uh, actually got COVID finally, and I congratulations. Yeah, you know, like, join the crowd, and I uh, hope you're feeling better, my friend. Oh, is it finally oh, well. he fi he finally got finally. caught up with the Rona. It caught up to him, huh? The yeah. Tycom virus got you, Scott. Mm -hmm. But he's back. He's a badass. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Be well. Randy Howell, boom. Thank you, Randy. Randy's always one of one of the good guys. He's a thank you, Randy. Kiki's there? Yeah. Where's he? Anywho. So Hi, so, Kiki is right there. Studio 714. What's up, brother? What's up, Kiki? Anyway, guys, so so Fran, you weren't there. So now I'm I'm a I'm a little bit crestfallen because I did remember I went there with the first 12 pages of the sheet because I always had in mind that I'm going to create my own comic someday, mm. right? So my story was my own creator own story. And, the, and like I said, it was the first 12 pages of she number one, which came out 29 years ago today. Oh, that's awesome. awesome. That's awesome. Ah! Right? So this was August 1993. Amazing. So And we have Brian to thank for it. Yeah, so then I go, Brian, and I got to tell you this, and I wrote about you in the Omnibus edition. Um... And so I go and I see you, and there's this handsome guy in shape with 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 his buddy Steven and his buddy Holding Jason, who, who looked like a teenager, Jason Jensen. Yeah, you know, because he was. You know, Steven, Steven was a was an in shape guy, looked great, you know, oh, like, shaved head, badass. You know, you guys yeah. are all in black and stuff. Yeah. And I don't know how I gravitated over to your booth because I just something was there because I remember seeing the Evil Ernie books you had. And yes. I don't know if you had yet to be, began to hard to miss evil Ernie, right? <laughs> yes, but it's also but designed but, appropriately, right? But I think that those were the, were they the Malibu evil Ernie books? Were you yet a self publisher? 
that the, when we met, we were promoting Evil Ernie Special Limited Edition from Malibu. And we ourselves, I believe, well, if it was 93, nope, it was. It was the first season of Coffin. Mm. So that summer, we were uh, uh, chaos. French. <laughs> chaos. Uh, so we, um, yeah, that would be Evil Ernie, probably like number one in the resurrection, number one or two around then. Yes. And so I go up to Brian with my portfolio after being shot down by these other guys um, for little things. And it wasn't, I wasn't necessarily shot down, but they were all looking for me and wondering if I could draw like Jim Lee. Mm. And I could yeah. never draw like Jim Lee. Right. I can't. Your name's not Jim Lee? I'm not Jim Lee. They were looking yeah. for Jim Lee clone because Jim Lee had hopped over to Image. So they were looking for Jim Lee type clones. Yeah. And then Jim I met. Lee 2.0. Right. And then I met this kid sitting there rock star already <laughs> i don't know how, how how if you had money or nothing like that but you 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 were out there like a rock star and you were uh, so inspiring make it till you make it brother yeah 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 exactly. but but francisca your husband was so magnanimous uh, ma magnanimous magnanimous and so gregarious and so confident in what he was going to do mm -hmm. and then but what the thing with, with him was that brian Talked to me, spoke to me like a peer. As we, he was from Jersey, I'm from New you know, Long Island. We both lived in the city, sort of thing. Yeah. And you just, like I said, you just were like, dude. So what's what is this? I don't know if you remember. I'm like, well, this is my comic I want to do, but I'm trying to get work. And you were like, why don't you just make your own damn comic? Why don't you just do this? If you and then you offered me a job for a pinup, which yeah. ended up being the lady that swimsuit issue. Yes. A year later. Yeah, it was huge. So, yeah. but but at that time in August ninety three, August ninety three to August ninety four was a whole yeah. world away. Yeah, yeah. You, right. Think about yes. you. Think of you, Brian Polito, nineteen ninety three, August nineteen ninety three. Right. Where were you at that point? You you're at San Diego Comic Con. It was early night because it was like so your birthday. Explain. Yeah. Yeah, and we were, you know, we were rolling the dice. Any penny that we had went into making these comic books. We were very lucky that Ernie the Resurrection One sold over sixty six thousand copies. We just sort of got swept up in that kind of like comics were doing pretty good. Now, at the same time, Exo Man of War Number Zero is probably doing six hundred nine hundred thousand. Right. So our fifty is kind of measly, but you know what? Our fifty was enough for us to start. Yeah. 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 And, and how our careers kind of dovetailed, if you think about it, is Evil Arnie was always a cult sensation, not a teen sensation, but a cult sensation. But by that time, we had realized for every Evil Ernie print that I might sell, I was selling five Lady Death prints. It was really that simple. Wow. And I, it, it was really that simple. It was yeah. like, oh, maybe we should tell her story. Literally, that was it. And we started heading in that direction. And in a sense, our timelines were the exact same because you were going to start heading in that direction too. And look, this tonight is really about the celebration of she's 30th anniversary. 29th. 29th. Sorry, whiskey. So <laughs> you're just going to have to settle the F down a little bit, Billy, and you're going to have to do a little more listening and a little less talking. So I want to acknowledge you <laughs> for being so like... For in the face of no agreement, you took up the charge. You had, you didn't, it's not that you didn't have aptitude, mm -hmm. but you didn't have a background in printing. You didn't have a background in finding a, a colorist, a letterer, financers, any of that stuff. We didn't know who the F was diamond. Where do you find a colorist? You knew none of that. And yet none of that prevented you from your goal. And I think among the many reasons why we are attracted to each other's souls is that you are goal focused. Like all that stuff that gets in the way, it's almost minutia. And if, it, if your experience was anything like mine, some of that stuff was very, very daunting. Mm. Like there was a point yeah. when we went to print Evil Ernie number one and I realized I promised this thing was going to be in color. And I knew no colorists in comics because yeah. although a fan, I knew nobody. 
And this was you, like there was nothing gonna stop you. Now you can tell in Regalis with some stories of some near do wells that got involved with you and could have changed the course of your destiny, but even that wouldn't stop you. Can sure. you illuminate a little bit, uh, illuminate us a little bit about that, please? Yeah, so if you remember that, so I came back and I remember I was on the plane, I brought and I might the, the little portfolio book and I, it was up in the, you know, the the overhead storage. And I remember taking it down and looking at it, I'm like, okay, I have 12 pages here. This is these two pages are good. This page I have to redo, et cetera, et cetera. I'm like, this guy Brian who gave me his card and offered me a job for well, uh, for a pinup, you know. Uh, you know, and uh and I'm like, he's doing his own books. Why don't I do my own book? And I remember I came to Deborah and then I had met um, a few weeks later, I had met the, this, Manhattan. the Manhattan, the, the, these chaps who had a, uh, a penthouse, uh, on 34th street, Madison Avenue, and they were going to publish me and all this stuff. And I literally became a glorified, uh, secretary for them. So I would go there every day for, for, for some reason. And and draw. Well, they, I can I can you, shed light on yeah. that. They basically the gentleman's agreement while the a gentleman's agreement. Here the here. gentleman's agreement while the written agreement was being written up was that if they were gonna sponsor or or produce your comic book, they wanted to be aware of what you were doing. Mm -hmm. So you were supposed to be finishing the book in their office so right. they could see what you were doing. And then the secretary duties kind of just slipped in. So, yeah, so literally I became, my, 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 for me to finish this comic book, I was at the front desk of their office with an artboard and my files of Japanese armor and all this stuff and drawing while I'm answering phones every five minutes. For six months, seven months, I was the, not that long. No, not that long. Whatever. Yeah, it wasn't that long because it was it was in the fall. It was long enough for us to have a party yeah. and for them to yeah. drop a contract that yeah. we promptly didn't sign. Right. So then we we so then all of a sudden I, I reach out the diamond, I reach out the hero's world, I reach out the capital city, the distributors at the time, the main distributors at the time. And Debbie drafts a letter as Deborah Steffens, which she was back then. Uh, what were you, the marketing manager or something like that? Whatever title we made up with our, you know, and, um, we got accepted into diamond and then we took out ads, full page ads out of diamond and capital city and heroes yeah. world. Yeah. They're like distributors. even back then. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So then the orders come in and we don't know mm -hmm. what the orders are because now <laughs> I'm, I'm like you, Brian, I am pushing ahead. I am going full bore. I ended up somehow getting. Wait, didn't the what? Aussie guy tell you that there was no way he was paying for yeah. those ads? Yeah, yeah. But the orders oh, could yeah. come in. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. we, we got. The story in the right so order. I was able to fool people so much that I was part of the big company that I got Diamond to print our ads without paying them yet. That, oh, that yes. was awesome. So then the, the now the time they comes. Kind of that part. Right. So the time now <laughs> comes for us to pay them. So it's me and Debbie, really, and me scratching out comic book pages while I'm answering phones at this office in the city. And Diamond is withholding our orders, and they won't tell oh. us what our orders did. So my Diamond oh. rep at the time says, well, Billy, you know what? This is before your book came out. So it's probably January, early January 94. Yeah, probably and they say, you January know, 10th. Yeah, so they're order. like, Billy, let's just cancel the book and you can resolicit it sometime really? next year in 94. I'm like, no. What? This book <laughs> has to go now. This book has to go now. What do I have to do to get? So I go to one of the guys of my partners and the guy says to me, Brian, this is one of the best lines ever. And he says, Billy, if you think I'm going to pay $4,000 to advertise a comic book, <laughs> You're out of your fucking mind. <laughs> and I'm like, but in an Australian accent. What it what in New Zealand? Yeah. Or New it, Zealand. Yeah. Like, oh, and no. I'm like, okay, fine. So now these guys are now they're threatening to sue me and they're gonna own 50% of the company. 
<gasps> Little did they know. You hadn't signed the contract. I never signed a contract. Little did they know. Debbie's aunt works for one of the biggest. Debbie's godmother, her aunt, works for one of the biggest lawyers in Manhattan. Nice. And he gets his guys on, and they jump in, and they destroy them. Yeah. And well, you kind of you. So while all this was going on, the contract comes out. I look at the contract. They want fifty percent of my doing. character, which I had nothing to do with for so, three months or so that I'm working there. Yeah. So we gave the contract to my aunt to give to her boss just to look after us. Right. And she lived her life in that office, so there wasn't anything her boss wouldn't do for her. Right. Um, oh yeah, he's real big, he and we like yeah. We and yeah. super conservative, super waspy, never cracked a smile. But if she asked him to do it, he would do it. So he read it and. She got on the phone with me, and her exact words were, tell Billy to get out of that office now. So yeah. horrible contract. He would be signing everything away. Ooh. I never got away. paid. I was just, I, I was literally there for, I was that free intern answering phones. But you know what people, you know what is when you're young? I, yeah. I don't worry, right? And I don't remember that. Yeah, you, know, you probably you thought that, that was the path. But here's the great thing. Enough about them. They are only a footnote to your glorious history. Let's jump ahead through the thick and the thin, the insurmountable obstacles. Billy Touche puts out she number one. What was that like when she hit the stands? Okay, so 19. Hit the so, yeah, she hits the fans. <laughs> so, the yeah, fans. so 1993, <laughs> right? We, I, she had a great job. She's brilliant. She's beautiful. She's a fucking rock star. I'm poor as dirt. I am right. Doing Betty Boop t-shirts and stuff like that. Yeah. She number one comes out and then just, but, but the trial and trip tribulations that led to that, like my mother gets into a car accident mm. and my mother's car gets destroyed. So my mother has no car now. So now I get the film for she number one, it's got to get to dying by the end of March, or they're going to cancel the orders, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yeah, right. And, sure. and I end up getting on the train, the subway, and riding into Manhattan to get to the FedEx office that Excellent. in Manhattan. They close at 9 p.m. No, with all the film. Wow. Get it in there. The book, whatever. Oh. The, the, the book gets done. Mm -hmm. It gets taken care of. It ships. And holy crap, Ryan, the book hits, right? So it, it, it's on stands today, 20. Nine years ago today, she is first in comic shops. And the book was returnable because, Brian, like oh. you, I didn't know what I was talking about. So yeah. Mark Herr, who was my rep at the time, says, you got to have some kind of hook. You need a gimmick to sell your book. I'm like, I'll have a glow-in-a-dark cover. Little did Because I saw the Marvel, the Tex, you know, sure. the Mark Tex, Ghost Rider, glow-in-a-dark yeah. cover. Sure. Little did I know after that cover came out. Glow in the Dark Ink was banned in North America because it was oh. toxic. That cover is oh. toxic. <laughs> that cover, if you have it, don't touch it with your hands because it's really <laughs> toxic. So oh there was no Lord. Glow in the Dark covers for 30 years after that cover oh. came out in oh. North America. So oh. because I didn't have a Glow in the Dark cover, the book's now returnable. Wow. So we so anyway, so I go to some friends. Can we say that? So I owe five thousand dollars a diamond for the ad. We go to friends. Right, we right. say that we'll friends. Call them friends. We'll call them friends. We go to friends. I need five thousand dollars. My friends say, "We got it for you. Good luck." So our friend, our friend, and that's how friends and family are. That you have people that will do stuff, even though they don't have a lot of money themselves, will give you that money to give you know that you can pay for those ads. And so she number one comes out. We get thirty seven thousand orders. Amazing. She Amazing. number one. Awesome. I don't know what Lady Death number one got. And we'll talk about your print run right after this. But yeah. so I print 50. So I yeah. go to the printer. I have no money. But I'm so, I think enthusiasm is so contagious. Yeah. And I'm like, I have I have 37,000 orders for this book. Yeah. I will pay you. Yeah. And they're like, okay. And yeah. Sparta Printing in Sparta, Illinois. And she printed that book. <laughs> at, uh, Fred Pierce. So it was Fred Pierce from, from okay. Valiant that I had met. And Fred saw the book, and I just somehow convinced Fred Pierce that this is going to be a great book. And Fred vouched for me. Fred That's still amazing. talks about yeah. that today. That's amazing. Fred yeah, Fred's is a always been a good guy. Man. Fred's a great guy. A, a prince of a man. So, mm -hmm. so Brian, thanks to Lady Death Number One, who came out June, uh, January 10th, 
1994. Now we're February 9th. Oh, sorry, February 9th. Okay. So we're a little over a month later. Yeah. Thanks to you selling out with your 50,000 print run because you printed 50, right? Yeah, I think we were at, well, I, we, um, yeah, something like 51. And I think we had orders for more. Oh, but there was a, it was chromium cover and there was always a scratch. So we had a high rate of damage. Oh. So we shipped on an allocation right out of the box. And that also, I think, added to the story. It was an authentic yeah. story, but it was real. Like we shipped it increased an allocation real quick. Yeah. So, so, so your initial, what were your initial orders? You think 51? Yeah, I think it was uh, my recollection between Diamond Cap, Comics Hawaii, uh, Friendly Frank's Heroes World yeah. was about 51 in change of, uh, I think it was 54, I believe, and we could only satisfy 51. Wow. So all of a sudden you create a feeding frenzy when the book that hits. didn't include the reorders. Right. So that's a, diff that's a different topic. Yeah. But yes. So yeah, and without knowing it, it did create a feeding frenzy. Now what happened was, we had chromium covers. They were very expensive even then, and there was a lot of damage. So we did have 5,000 interiors left over, but we didn't have the chromium covers. So we oh, actually had enough to do a commemorative edition. Oh, see what it did. Good job. Later on, again, all innocent. Later on, and we offered them at San Diego Comic-Con. We brought them all. We're selling for $25 a piece. And back then. We, back then, we sold thousands it was bananas but also like francisca said i think we had a friend wayne markley out of cap city yeah sure he was just enthusiastic about the mm -hmm. book so took it upon himself to offer it as a reorder and we got reorders you know whenever it was 30 60 days later of twenty nine thousand. oh my god but that damn chromium cover, we could, we were demoralized and crushed by the process mm -hmm. of making that cover. The reality was the production of Lady Death number one, we we sold 51,000, but due to costs, printing, overruns, mistakes, it was only profitable to the tune of about $2,000. Wow. And I had to go to Stephen, literally crying that I had failed so magnificently as a publisher and as that as i'm having that emotion in that overall feeling for a period of weeks the comic is blowing up going into the stratosphere and all these mistakes that i had made innocently were just lending to the story and the mythology of the whole thing oh my god <laughs> i love you apologize here you are like you like you're 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 you you got you're like a one man show or a, or a, or a two gun show the two yeah. of you you know what I mean you yeah. guys are two guns and here you are this small tiny publisher and you have to apologize to your extraordinarily patient and 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 believable artists you know yes. that that believed in you and you know yes. how Stephen is and we all love it we all loved him my God yes. and and you apologize like I'm sorry I failed you meanwhile yeah. you guys do you remember Fran. At San Diego Comic Con, because you guys had the end booth, we were right next to you. Thank you. And and you were there, Fran, and you were already a pro though, because you were, remember, Fran, you were controlling yep. the crowd. You had you had the end cap. Do you remember that, Bright? Yes, yeah. right. We had an end cap. Sure. And we were right next things. to you, in Indy in the Indy Island. Indy Island. Island. I don't think we were directly next to them. We were like a couple down. No, I thought we were next. To we're no, a couple of there was people that we were pissing off next to. Us. Oh, it'd be too cool yeah. if we were next to them. There'd be too much. <laughs> they, they they couldn't handle them, the two of us next to each other. How you girls looked, Brian and Debbie. I'm not even talking about that. Just the lines because we had lines. Well, Brian, I'll talk about them. that. Right, those yeah. girls. Oh my god, damn. Daytime tens. <laughs> yeah, daytime. Is that what it is? Daytime, no, daytime dimes. dimes. Oh, okay, I did. And then I get Brian. It. And then Brian and Steven beat the shit out of some people at San Diego Comic Con. So, like, wow, welcome to comics. <laughs> Somebody else got into a, a friend, fight besides yeah. you? Way before me, him and Brian, him and Steve beat the How shit. How do I not know that story? Oh, that's a good story. You get to back a off. Different man. story for a different time. Look, Billy, this is oh, what I, how I, story. Yeah. we didn't know. We didn't know that's not how you solve problems. We only right. knew how to solve problems the way we knew how to solve problems. Well, someone steal something from you. Yeah. East Coast. That's East why you're outlaws, That's man. It. You guys were outlaws from the beginning. And then I'm like, I want to be an outlaw like them. 
RC's story was that so we shipped she and be, and uh within a week or two weeks God. because of you we had reorders of over 140,000 wow and i'm like we don't have a <laughs> what <laughs> and i remember talking to one retail i'm like dude the books are we had 37,000 i printed 50 yeah i want to keep like a fat or three boxes like 900 for the shows and he goes Stop pushing that I, know, I can't. I can't. He goes, well, why don't you just print more? No one's going to know. I'm like, what? And I'm like, all right. So now, you know, being in the New York, I'm like, okay, this guy is trying to, yeah, I'm not Get printing. You out of your mind. That's all yeah. I need is, right, right? I'm going to find a printer. Like, oh, let's print more here. Right. Remember back in the day it was film. Remember it was all film. I so do. let's transport the film from Sparta, <laughs> Illinois to another printer. No right. one's going to ever know. Right. Nothing's going to look different. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> But it was it was insane. So San Diego '94. So again, going back to Brian in San Diego '93, eleven months earlier, Brian's got a small table, yeah. a six foot table yeah. in small press. But he was already Fran, the peacock, your husband. I know. <laughs> Bam. Well, I get you, I get what you see in him. You really have to <laughs> you really think back off, Billy. Plain Brian to Fran. Well, he's like the he's like <laughs> no. But he's like the big brother. He, uh, you know, he never Sorry, wanted to. You know. <laughs> so, so and, but then 94 came and holy crap. Then they moved us, us and you, to the autograph area. Bullshit. Yes. And who was a few tables down? William Shatner. <laughs> I think he was next to us, right? It was William yeah. Shatner. He's like, oh, what are you guys? He's Billy like, was so excited. He's like, what are you? I'm like, I don't know. I, we made a comic. And he's like, <laughs> He was so cool. It's like, okay, Shatner was there. Well, my experience of that was, this was my experience. So we had this cool booth. It was so cool. Our booth had fire alarm lights. Yes. I brought a smoke machine and we were rocking that. Yeah. And we're starting to attract far too much attention and we just didn't know the rules. So the people from San Diego came around and said, you can't have people around the booth like this. You can't have the, the lights. You can't use a smoke machine. I said, no, I pay to be here. You don't understand. This is what it takes for us to be us. And they're like, no, 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 you, you, you can't use the fire alarm lights because it could trigger some people's, um, what was it? Epilepsy. Epilepsy. You know, I didn't understand to... any of this stuff. And I was kind of unwilling to. Event, oh, we had strobe lights. We had strobe lights, strobes. So it, and they were fire. Yeah, the whole thing. Um, eventually, they did talk us into moving because it was just a crowd. It was crazy. It was a crowd. It was, it was a bad circumstance. It was just too many people. Um, I loved it. Yeah, it was quite great. And they moved That's us fine. down to that area, but I was yeah. affronted. So then we brought music with us and we're playing like body count or, you know, the, the craziest stuff on earth, but we were affronted. So we got all our people together in the long lines. And we, I think we sang together America the Beautiful or something like that. But there was and glory, glory, hallelujah, us. something like that. All of a sudden we hear... <laughs> As they chase you from your booth in <laughs> Indie Island, right? And we were indie indie people, but they don't know that we're coming in there. Yeah. Like what we do, right? Because they right. used to like want to buy right. my comic book. No, we're fucking well, you want to buy this fucking comic. You want to read something great? Yeah. Right. We knew we I think we knew sort of like PT Barnum style yeah. for us to get attention. We had to be loud and proud about it. Mm -hmm. And over the top. Because we've never, I know for me, I never had the marketing dollars of the Marvel and the DC, but I wanted that attention and I thought I, we could compete. <laughs> right so Henry Bemis says, I met Brian at San Diego Comic Con in the early 90s. I was a teenage metalhead searching for, you know what I mean? Like a brother, you know, searching yeah. for a kin, searching for That's a fellowship. Favorite. And he says, and I remember him being very kind. <laughs> uh, and RT Bears in the house. What's up? <laughs> Art, how are you? Hi, Art. Absolutely. Absolutely, Brian's punk rock. Greetings. So, so yeah. I remember when they removed you from your booth, and I remember it had it was hundreds of people. And I think you were saying like glory, glory, something like <laughs> some some sort like this, this, this. It was like a, a, a pilgrimage. It was a Americana. pilgrimage. No, of like this it defiant was... pilgrimage of guys in leather jackets. It was a protest. Yeah. yeah. It was a... <laughs> This was your protest march. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, Salter's, 
Yeah, so that Brian, was that. you kill you kill it on in the mainstream, right? You you take over the mainstream, you outsell Marvel books, you outsell DC comics, you know, so for you? a couple of months, you know, for a time there, you were outselling every DC comic. Yeah, you there was were a time by far for a short period of time, coffee uh, chaos comics was the number four publisher of comics in America. We dominated the wizard top 10 list for like late F number one was number one for like 21 months in a yeah, row. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I think at one point they said, we're so sick of uh, like lady death. Number one, again, we're, you know, we, we love the, we love Brian Polito. We're so sick of like talking about this, how, how popular this book was, how hot it was for three sure. years or so. Yes. So now then you move though. Um, as, as we all do, you, we are, we are evolutionary types of people. We are, uh, progressive in a way to keep going forward. We're always going forward. All of a sudden now you then come stumble upon with our a great friend, uh, help from our friend, Jimmy Pamiati, who leads away. And all of a sudden, and I post that you become, both of you become the Kings and Queens <laughs> of Kickstarter of crowdfunding. So now all of a sudden coffin comics creates i would say a renaissance and leading the way for a new golden age of creator owned comics and so well, well thank where you. are we now with coffin comics Let him talk. okay <laughs> well we're making a giant leap from that from our time back in 94 all the way to 2015. yeah and but what i will say is this or in somewhere around 2014 i was kind of looking at the, throughout the landscape of comics in the, the conventional comics industry. And I, I interviewed all the cap, the conventional captains of industry. I'm not going to name them, but you know them all, you know, the retail giants, the, this one, the, that one. And I try to understand where would my place be in this new reality? Mm -hmm. And my conclusion after probably spending like 40, 50 hours interviewing these folks is it ain't here. So mm. I was very inspired by Jimmy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. when I saw Jimmy making a comic book about some crab lady. Yeah, crab. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, look, Jimmy's making comics about crab ladies. He's basically, in a sense, he's making whatever it is he wants and people are responding. I That was enough for me. I took that leap. I called Jimmy and the main takeaway, he was always very generous, very kind. You know, I call, um, yep. Jimmy's really like the king of comics. Sometimes he's the mayor. I've called him the mayor. But he's godfather. Not the godfather. He be the godfather. godfather. But he should be the godfather. So, okay. So the godfather. Right. Mayor is so so let's just you know give give the devil his due. Jimmy Palmiotti is the godfather of comics. His generosity is known by all. And my takeaway from this real important conversation was was this: like, hey Jimmy, should I um should I have my project mostly done and ready to print? Or should I, you know, wait till it's funded? And what he said to me made perfect sense. And I just, I took it like the gospel. And he's like, if you have it done and ready to print, then you could get it out and you could do another one. <laughs> and, yeah. and that was it. And I cut yeah. to, that was 2015. We launched our first one in February 4th, 2015 to much success. And now it's 33 campaigns later. We put out one every three months this year. We're actually going to, if you could believe it, we're going to put out six. Through crap. Yeah, you watch out. So, if our effort has created any kind of tailwind for I others, it's in that number. <laughs> I'm sleepy. <laughs> you guys amaze me. Yeah, we're just. Uh, we have a great team. We have a pretty serious team. We have team. a really kick ass team. I mean, we probably view like doing comics the way teams, like football players, look at sports, getting to the mm -hmm. playoffs, getting like every day is about incremental improvement like improve improve let's how can we do this better how can we do it faster etc cetera, etc cetera. but that's neither here nor there um if our success has created a tailwind for others our motivation is simply we're just trying to tell a story so all uh, you know in in and provide excitement i guess for me billy it's similar to you the things that excite me about comics are telling the story and then marketing and promoting that story and connecting with people like those are the big things for me and everything we do is really in service of that. Like if there's something that's not that, we just get rid of it. Like that we're just about that. If we can create some fun and excitement for people, that's the game. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if it's created any kind of tailwind for other people, I think that's great. And we're just very, very, you know, cutting to the present. We're grateful.
Yeah. But and we really believe that it's the way that independent publishers should publish. Mm. Just to be able to that have that connection directly with your fan base is the coolest in the whole world. Because we're doing it to tell stories so that the fans can read the stories and we can all enjoy it together. Yeah, so yeah. to just be able to go from point A, us, point B, the fans, and yeah. have that togetherness and that connection, there is nothing like it in the world. It's just, yeah. it's just the greatest. So I'm glad you finally did it, Billy. Yeah, that's a fun story. Oh, well, look at Terry Moore. Hot damn coming in Terry there. Yeah. You know, he'll never Jimmy. say no ever again. We've been trying Jimmy's to get on. Terry. What? Jimmy's on. Jimmy. Jimmy's there? Shh. Jimmy. Jimmy. I, guess might have just, I don't know, Jimmy, if you <gasps> caught like our, Hi, shout out, our shout outs to you and our respect to you, Godfather. Yes, Jimmy, we were, we were talking about you. Godfather. 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 I thought Jimmy was Mr. traveling. Ray. Love you. Love you, Jimmy. I'm sure there's a computer with him if he's traveling. Yeah, but Jimmy and Amanda, are, I thought we're traveling. So, so I, you can still send him the link. He's got a phone. I got to say. Well, well, so you're saying going to the future now. Let's talk going to Wait, the future. Wait, I want to add on to something yeah. that um, Francesca, Francesca, Francesca just said. I'm sorry. I always do that to your name. You can and call I'm me whatever you want. I love you. I love you, too. And no more. Um, sorry. <laughs> evermore, evermore, Fran. <laughs> oh, I'm empty. Um, wow. The whole direct, direct Poor to shame. the ultimate consumer thing. Um, in addition to the way how it helps the creative end, like you were saying, there's also that immediate accountability, which you bet. I, love. I love that. You know, there's no people wondering where their money's going, or you know, where, and if they do wonder, then I'm making a phone call. Yeah, she and does. She, she calls I them. I call yeah. them. It blows their minds. But that's, that's where my roots come from. I spent all day on the phone back in the day in sales. That's what you did. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I would pick. I would rather pick up a phone than send a text or send an email any day. You and bet. But somebody that's upset or concerned, I want to immediately let them know that we are taking it just as seriously as they are. I agree. And Ooh. it's it's something you can't ever have. When there's three people in between you, I there's, I agree that there's no but you there's no way to find out and there's no way to address it. All we can do is agree. Yeah, we believe in that kind of transparency and accountability. We know who the boss is. The boss is our customer. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. We yeah we call the whole thing it's the direct to customer revolution. Oh, I agree. I I, 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 love, I love that they call very, I, I, very well put. I love that that our fans because we're all like a, you know older now etc. And they actually, they literally call us out mm -hmm. for accountability. They do. The fans call you. If you don't deliver, your books are not going to do well the next time. You have well, to deliver. My general attitude about that, Billy, is like I, I'm. I totally live in that world every day. I'm all about it. Like I'm. I that I've signed up for that. I am accountable. I mean, I know in our relationship to our uh, fiendom is highly immersive, super interactive. Like. I can't get away with shit if I fuck up. Yeah. So I, for me personally, it, it causes me to want to always be a stand up guy for them. Right. And, you know, try to be, uh, you know, just that I always aspire to that all the time. And then deliver the most badass rock and roll outlaw yeah. comics the world has ever effing seen. Correct. I, what I like about our fan base too is like, I kind of have to just get to do what I would do naturally. Like I want to be accountable and do the right thing. But you know, sometimes I'm like kind of boozy party guy, loud mouth, have things to say. Like they're fine with it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Oh, Thank you, Bobby. Sweet. Oh, you saw Bobby yeah. too? I uh, Bob Bob Nunnery. Bob Nunnery was there was a real Bob Nunnery who was a, a World War II hero who actually parachuted in. Might have been with the five. Family. It might have been Bob Nunnery, might be a uh, uh a relative. One of, oh. he's, a, he's a paratrooper World War II hero. So if I can, just briefly. So Bob Nunnery, I called because he had made a, a comment on our message board about um, wanting to CGC something. And I was trying to make things happen for him. And from that one phone call, Bob Nunnery has become my buddy. Like we talk about other stuff now. <laughs> He'll call me, I'll call him, we'll message each other on Facebook. So it, there's a nice relationship that came just out of a request on a 
on a Kickstarter message board. Great. I lost my girlfriend for over 30 years. Oh, Bob shut Nutter. up. Great. I talked to his oh, wife, too. Great. Uh, anyway, so we've talked a lot about big, May yeah. I give a big shout out in the stream is my co-writer, Mike McLean. Oh, there he is. Hey, hey buddy. I see him right here. Bam. Hi, Mike. Who's Mike? Mike? There it is. Mike and I are like... Hey. We are uh, neck deep in our 2024 storyline. It took us from September to December to outline it. And I just uh, today finished the first draft of our first chapter for this storyline. I can't say a lot about it, but I will say it is the most ambitious storyline that Coffin Comics has attempted. And that is our 2024 storyline, which will be the celebration of Lady Death's 30th anniversary. Okay. Holy shit, I just got goosebumps. Oh my God. Watch out. But I would oh, like to, ding. I would also like to swing this back to you, Billy Tucci, and to Deb, because this really is about a celebration of the release of She Number One. Right, but that's yeah. also in the past, Brian. So let's go toward <laughs> the future. If we're talking 2024, because I have a very special guest right here in the green room. Oh. who we all adore, and we're going to have him on for a few minutes because I see him working right now in the back room, but why don't we bring in the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, the oh-so-handsome and strapping Mr. Dan Mendoza. Whoa. What up, What's up, man? Dan, yeah, your uh, hair is rocking. Look at that. Yeah, hair. Is, yeah nice. it's, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, very, I'm very Morrissey these days. You are. <laughs> Morrissey, it's a good thing to be. He's like a big, <laughs> soft, hot guy. You know what I mean? He's just like a fucking badass. Don't ever mess with him in a bar. Right? <laughs> What's up, brother? So I had to bring Dan. I had to bring Dan in because I know we talked about it's a twenty. It's a twenty ninth anniversary of she. But yeah. Dan and I have a conversation about what he's working on now. Yeah. Going because we're always looking to the future, right? We're always going forward. So Dan. Yes. What are you doing right now? What are you working on? What is in the future for Dan Mendoza? And um, just, just real quick, uh, around 1993-ish, I met Brian Polito at uh, a small little hotel show in Orange County. Uh, the first time I seen uh, uh, Evil Ernie, the first time I saw a drawing of Lady Death, I bought these 11 by 17 Xerox copy prints. <laughs> I think for five bucks, and he signed it and stuff. And that, that was like the game changer. That was the introduction uh, for me for uh, for that 90s bad girl um, genre and stuff like that. And because of things like that, it spawned someone like me who created something later on called Zombie Trap. So yeah. we're happy to say that, that uh, next, what, this, at the end of this year, man, is the, the Zombie Trap, the Lady Death versus Zombie Trap uh Crossover book, man. Yeah. November fourth. What? November fourth. Raise the roof. Raise the roof. So he, Brian, so he's exciting. a fan of yours. Creates his own empire, and now you're joining <laughs> forces to take over the entire comics world. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, I have nothing but respect for Dan. And if you'll notice, this is the thing. This comic is a still ill princess production. Yes. For all intents and purposes, I license this right to Dan. There yes. is, there are no, there's not a, there's only, a, gosh, there's very few people I would do that to. <laughs> and that's because you know, I, I met Dan and I just felt like we were kind of simpatico in a lot of ways. And I, I, I yeah, I mean, I just completely trust Dan and, uh, you know, I just feel like we totally vibe and, uh, I think we have a similar work ethic. I know no matter where I am in the world, I know Dan's working. And I, and I, think, that, <laughs> and I think he That's knows true. that wherever I'm in the world, I'm working. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I'll email Brian in the morning. I'm on the East Coast. And I'll email him thinking I'll hear from him like around noon or something like that. And he'll answer right away. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing up? <laughs> Why are you okay. awake this early, man? It's crazy. <laughs> so, Brian, so Brian, uh, so Dan, the gist of this is no pressure. <laughs> yeah. No, this, hey, good luck to you. It's you got it. Yeah. got it. We got it, man. We He's got, got it. Look at that, man. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's rocking, man. The, every, the whole plan is great. I mean, again, yeah, I mean, everything is going good. Um, FYI, Fran, that the voice recording you did for what we're that thing we're working on.
working on is amazing and uh and uh i got voiceover. i could i could send you i could send you a rough of that if you want oh, to cool. see it yeah, Ooh, yeah that's exciting. Hear it. Yeah, I'll just send it on Facebook Messenger. Okay, that's cool. thank you. So what I love about this is that Dan and I have been talking, and I know how excited he is about the 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 zombie, uh, you know, Lady Death versus Zombie Tramp book. And I love the idea that you are so, both of you are so, and we too, we we've done our 2024 schedule, like you, you, we plan everything out, but then some gems come along. Hmm. And then that, but see, I've yet to get to that point, but you, you have the faith that, well, obviously Dan is someone that you can trust, that you entrust your baby, your baby, right? Yeah. Literally your, your child yeah. with him and it's in good hands. But so, but how did that come along that like, yeah, heck yeah, I'll do that. You can have Lady well, Death. Well, I've got to tell you, I mean, I'll let Dan sell, tell his part, but I will say this, that I actually turned down like a major crossover, like a major crossover. Cause major. I, but because what, what? Spider-Man, <laughs> I, turned, I turned down a major crossover. Cause, um, I, I, I guess candidly the work, you know, I yeah. it just, I thought I was going to have like a boss, but with Dan, you know, I just feel like there's a kindred spirit there, a brotherhood. So I felt like, I could just entrust Dan. That's the whole story. I don't. I don't even know. How, I actually don't know how this came about. I think Dan might have hypnotized you. It was oh, so he changed, he bamboozled you at his wedding. He got you all up. I just got married. My wife is gorgeous. Your wife is gorgeous. Also, we like yes, yes. Uh, that's a more whistle big one. Yeah, whistle big. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, man. I, I, we had talked about it a while back uh, when I was with a publisher, and um, the publisher basically ruined it for me. Um, so Brian said, "I don't, I don't want to do this." Um, so I was like, "Oh, that sucks." That's pissed me off. And then uh, the publisher was a, couple, a dick, dude. Yeah, a couple, a couple more, a couple more things happened where I'm just like, "I, I got to get out of this publisher, man." So, so years go by. I get the rights back to Zombie Trap. I get an email for Brian say, Hey, I need to talk to you. And I'm like, well, all right. So we scheduled a phone call and the phone call was, do you still want to do the lady death zombie Trump book? Oh. You know what I mean? I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's basically that's how awesome. it was, man. And, uh, and it's, it's really, it's really cool that, um, uh, when I started the script, it was really hard to start. Um, I, I just kept started reading back issues of lady death books and things like that. But it, what was really cool is that once I turned the script over to Brian to approve and stuff, because he he wants to go over her dialogue a lot, of course, because it has to sound like Lady Death. I, I was really happy when he goes, okay, that's it looks good. I'm done. And he didn't really change any dialogue. And I was like, hey, I kind of know how she sounds then. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, I mean, the cool thing about this project, too, is I know that we're really going into the mind of Dan Mendoza and how you tell stories, how you unfold yes. stories. And I didn't want to really impinge. So I think I, I literally might have changed into the first 28 pages one word because it's like, OK, I'm in. This is a certain vernacular and I'm going to respect that vernacular. Nice. Yeah, it's it's, it's totally going to have a, a still ill feel to it. Definitely. Yeah, um, it's uh, I keep I keep teasing that the idea is that you know uh uh your books are heavy metal and mine are are, are like punk rock new wave kind of yeah. <laughs> so, it's, so oh, it's definitely like gonna kind of have you a weird feeling yeah man in so it's like girls there. So I'm, I'm drawing i'm drawing uh lady death versus zombie trap pages uh while i'm listening to Bauhaus. you know what i mean uh, or, uh, you know joy division and stuff that's like a night uh, you got uh, you got night yeah, so Steve Bader's nice <laughs> dead boys, man, forever. Dead yeah, boys, man. Heck yes, man. I saw the dead boys in '86 oh, oh, at, wow. at uh, <laughs> I wish I did. That's one of the few bands I didn't get to see at the time. I would have loved to. I love the dead boys quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. I saw them. Yeah, we just got cure tickets, man. That's oh, awesome. congratulations. Wow. Yeah, we had weird stuff happen. Over yeah, there. it was all crazy, it was all messed up, but I, I ended up getting them. Um, Losses. Dan, I did not know you were a new wave kid. I did not. Oh, yeah, know. man, I'm I'm a I'm a Smith's Depeche Mode, Joy Division guy. Well, we yeah. saw yeah. we saw Duran Duran last summer, and 
I walked in with Debbie. We had great seats, and everyone thought that Debbie was a Duran Duran fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's like, I'm three, singing three, every spring and song, Hold Back the Rain, <laughs> Night Boat, every the show, every song, and these girls, all these women, all I was like, what? Like, he totally fanboyed out. I'm the, oh, oh my god, dude! Because awesome. I had to get on the right side of the stage because that's what John Taylor's always played. He's a bass player. <laughs> that's where you copied your haircut. You copied his haircut. I had to go with that damn mullet back again. Oh man, what? that's cool. Oh, dude, I think Duran Duran was one of the bands that really got me through the pandemic. Straight up, yeah. yeah they, oh, that's awesome. I had a, I just had to listen to happy music and transport myself to somewhere else. I was listening yeah. to like. Duran Duran, Berlin, Tim cool. Wall. Uh, yeah, Dave's listening to The Cure and Dead Boys. and Yeah. <laughs> but um, Madness was getting close to be playing around where we were at these little clubs. Oh, and, wow. uh, and it was right during the pandemic. And then all of a sudden, they they just stopped. I was like, they're going to they're gonna continue you know, playing out here. And it, I think it was like, I would have to go to Boston or something. But like, yeah. I was like, I got to go. And then it just all got canceled. So. Well, if anybody hears... If Susie and the Banshees or Susie Sue yeah. is playing anywhere in the United States, I will go. I saw her. Um, I saw her in Anaheim at the at the what's it called? The what's that on the on the Disney Strip? The the Does? House of Blues. House of Blues. House yeah. Of yeah. Blues. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I saw, I saw her there. I think she had just turned 50, so she kept doing her little high kicks and shit, but it's funny. I haven't heard that, but I saw Susie Sue in November 1980. Wow, um, that's when she, she was dressed properly, yeah. Yeah, she this was one, This one, she was just wearing a weird le leotard. And... You saw Susie Sue in 1980? Yeah, November 1980 at the Palladium. <sighs> so cool. I worked at the Palladium. Cool. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah, I saw, I saw Van Halen Diver down Palladium. in 1980, and I thought I was the coolest guy in the world. What did you see? Uh -huh. Van Halen Diver Down 1980 tour. You wow. were very cool. At the Coliseum 79. I think it was 80. It was early 80. Jimmy, on the other. Puppy Day. Happy International oh, Puppy Day. Oh, Jimmy, I have to send Jimmy the link. So send Jimmy the Shit, link. I know. I had to, I had to find it. the link. Shit. I thought Jimmy was traveling. Jimmy hasn't been you home for a month. That. I know. Just send him the link. Anyway, all right, Dan. <laughs> I know you're working, bro. Yeah, man. Uh, I just wanted to pop on because I wanted to talk about the Lady Death uh, Zombie yeah. Trap crossover that's coming out in 2024. <laughs> that you no, out, 2023 right, November is uh, is the date, man. There's the flyer right there, man. What? Oh, November 2023? Yes. November 3rd or 4th. Uh, yep, November <laughs> 3rd, man. We so. will actually we will party our butts off at the launch. Yes. The Guidos will be seeing Kiss at the Hollywood Bowl, but we will be part of the launch. Oh, man. That's Split awesome. Up. Wow. That's awesome. That's and awesome. then a week later, we're going to yeah. go see Metallica with you guys. That's right. And with the two-day Metallica Detroit. show. It's crazy because we're going we're gonna to see um, we're gonna see Depeche Mode and then two days later go see Metallica with you guys then take a day off and then go see Metallica again. So I love that little. Uh, I love that little that little break with Depeche Mode to make yeah. to Metallica. Because <laughs> you need a break to re to decompress. You got to change. You got to change vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Dan. Great to see you, brother. Yeah, love you, man. I, just wanted, I, 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 we, I invited Dan on because I know he's working right. so hard on the Lady Death Zombie Tramp uh, uh, crossover. crossover in no coming November. So I want to bring him on. But while you're here, Dan and yeah. Deborah. And Francisca and Brian. Francisca, look how adorable you are in that picture right there. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> look at you. That's Pretty hot. hot. Look, I, Damn. I didn't have She's a blonde Betty Page in that picture. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> hey now. All right, brother. Good to see you, man. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, man. You guys have a good one. Good night. Give pal. Mike Mayor a big hug for me. I will. All right, right man. Peace out. Talk Bye. to you. Damn, we have to get Jimmy on. I thought Jimmy was. Jimmy just said sorry. I don't know what that means. Uh, so he's. I thought Jimmy was. Jimmy was traveling. He was in. We know you said he that. He was like in New York. Times. He was in Kansas City. So I didn't think he was there because I wanted to bring Jimmy on. Jimmy, do you want to come on? And can you come on? Yeah. Anywho, guys, this has been a great stream. We go. Yes. We're going on for over an hour. We yes. love you. I just wanted to talk that on our 29th anniversary. Uh, gotcha, Jimmy. For she. And my mother-in-law's birthday, that we had a great time tonight. I remember because that's it was, it was mom's birthday. 
and <laughs> this little comic that could that aside from you jimmy can come on oh good oh my god all right hang on oh he's home shit you got a second to have jimmy on for a minute yeah okay Hang on, no, dead talk, talk, talk while I share, Jimmy. Hang on, talk, get in there. When are we going on vacation? <laughs> what? When are we going on vacation? Yeah, we, well, that's yes. a Jimmy conversation. That's a conversation. Oh, okay, that's for Jimmy? Yeah, that was, He's got that, a book. Was, that was Jimmy's idea, remember? Get in there, talk to him. That's true. We all rented big giant house in Key West. Do you guys have your hotels for San Diego? Yes, Marriott. Yes, yeah. Okay, good. Are we going to go to dinner? <laughs> of course we are. As long as you can squeeze this in, you have a busy schedule. Uh, no, it's you guys and your busy schedule. Yeah, it's always us sleeping. It's us sleeping. <laughs> it's like, what night are we supposed to stay up late? <laughs> so. Matt S. wants to know when the Tucci's are returning to Tucson. So that would be a, oh, a Brian okay. and Francisco question. We'll definitely uh, invite you and see if you can make it. Mm -hmm. We would love it. I yeah, love we, have, we have new dates now. We've been doing it. It's really cool. We actually moved the con that we own, Tucson Comic Con, to September to Labor Day weekend. And oh. by doing that, we actually doubled our attendance. It's bananas. Wow. It's bananas. No joke. You know, you thanks to our veteran staff member, Sarah Murphy, who was a real advocate of moving off our date, our date that we had always had, just had too much local competition. So and it was we, right near um, the Day of the Dead too, right? So I'm that sure was, that, that was the that issue. We were always we we're always right there during our All Souls procession, which is attended by two to three hundred thousand people. Hey, sweetheart, that's my baby right there. Aww, <laughs> Daddy's girl. Yep. I could do that for about five minutes with the dog I have now. <laughs> yeah, you have a big dog. <laughs> so how many pounds now? About 95. No, and oh, my God. Still, and still growing. We don't know that. She's honey. way over 100, honey. Billy she's thinks not. she's over 100. She's Maybe she is. way over 100. I don't know. My guess is 95. But so it doesn't crazy. matter because she's still growing and I'm in really big trouble. She's going to weigh more than me. <laughs> she's beautiful. She's pretty and and very sweet, and that's what saves her. Yeah, we'll do <laughs> Key West with, with uh, Jeff and Jaya Smith. Okay. Because they have a house. I sent you. I sent to Jim. Okay. Jim was traveling this week. That's why he's not traveling. He, he was. He was traveling for the past week and whatever. a half. Whatever. Oh. Anyway, Brian. Not that you guys haven't changed in like. I know. I know. Years so Brian, so real quick. Ago? Oh, here. Oh my God. There he is. Here he is. I guys, for all of our tall chairs, I'm a short little person. <laughs> I can't get on the chair, and then I swing around. Hey, father. I, I, I was enjoying just watching you guys. So, <laughs> you know, Jimmy, was, I, I was totally going to invite you, but I thought you were like all over the place. Were you in New York and then you went to Kansas City and you were, you yeah, were we, we got, we, we got back, uh, we got back the other day and Amanda's sick upstairs. She, she Aww. just took a COVID, COVID test, told me she had COVID, but she didn't really. She's just messing with me. So, oh, geez. oh my God. Yeah. Hey, guess what? I have COVID. Right. Asshole. Oh, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> well, we hope she feels better soon. Yeah. Yeah, she's just she's just got it picked up a cold. A lot of, it was cold in New York, guys. What's up with that? It's, yeah, it's cold. It happens. It's cold. Yeah, we live very isolated existences. So we, it's, we have it's, we have you know we have our fireplaces and we just chill out. No, I'm always cold. You're always cold. <laughs> well, I want to thank I want to thank both of you for uh, the shout outs for the painkiller Jane uh, Kickstarter, you know. Right on. Hopefully, it, uh, it, God knows it's impossible to get press for it for any of the oh, Kickstarters. Of course, Jimmy. Well, I got to ask you something. So yeah. we're friends, I, and I have to ask you this: with the amount, and and both you and Brian, both no of you names. guys, no names, but the amount that with the multiple, the dozens of Kickstarters you've done, crowdfunding books, the money that you've generated, Brian and Fran, the millions that you guys have generated via crowdfunding, and not only your website success, but also now you're in comic shops every month, mm -hmm. Coffee Comics. Does it frustrate you? Because we know these comic writers. We know them, right? We're friends with them. We've had drinks. With them. We've had dinner with them. And they just, I, I don't know. I find she reels me back because I get, like I, I get. But can, can I? Wait, what's the question? What's the question? Yeah, the that, question that, is, 
Does it, does it bother you? Like does it bother you? Like it bothers me that they're not covering you the successes that you're having, the no. fulfillment that you're fulfilling these projects. No. Or does not because it's I shown that they don't matter. Listen to yeah. them. Billy, 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 Billy. I, say. Go ahead. I really want a chance to answer. Go ahead. This. Go ahead, Brian. So for the first three campaigns, now we're on like something uh, 30, 20, I don't know how many. 140. We actually did send out press releases, professionally composed press releases that were sent out to all the known suspects mm -hmm. very kindly. I think Jimmy, Matt Hawkins all helped, helped me supply with all the, the latest names. And we got zero pickups. Yeah. When we nominated or when Francisca came on board as president of Coffin Comics, we sent out a press release to everybody. Zero pickups. But and zero pickups. So that you have a woman now. Let, let, let's just no. Let him talk. But you have a woman dude, running. You you're running you're asking the question, dude. If you want it, you really want the answer. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just realized, you know what? Um, they don't care, so I'm not going to care. And so the effort that I would have put in originally to generate that press release and put it out, I decided to put that into satisfying my customer. And I don't look back. I don't look anywhere else. I mind my own business and I just rock. Now I have finally got to meet, you know, folks at Kickstarter and they're like, and they're showing me, I realize some statistics that come along with what we have done coffin. And right. she's like, they're like, Whoa, dude. And I'm, and I'm like, what is there to say? Um, I think Jimmy said it before and I really got it. Like Jimmy, I, you know, Jimmy, I acknowledge you also, not only for being the godfather, but you have a wisdom. And what you said is, and it's true, it's not in the comic industry's interest to acknowledge the success. Right. As you and I sit here tonight, Coffin Comics has generated $8.1 million in comic book projects on Kickstarter. I don't wow. say that as a brag, but I say that as something's happening here. Yeah, right. I think it's a good brag, though, too. It's a pretty good brag. Yeah, but, I, like, I like the brand. It's a fact. It's a fact. And a fact. As, as much of a success as that created for our company in Kickstarter, it really is a, a tip of the iceberg to what we do in our direct-to-customer business. It's in right. the millions every year. It's astounding. So, Billy, I don't have any beef because, you know what, I just put the effort elsewhere because it's just not in their interest to acknowledge it. Right. And, I mean, if you're, right. and if you're successful, you don't have to worry about the outside world. All you have to do is create really great comics and get them to your fan base. And that's all you have to do. That's that's the relationship right there. There's going having a press release, an article. None of that is going to be as amazing or as impactful. or impactful to as our lives. You Directly in the to lives your of customers. our customers. I love Jimmy's perspective because I, I, what I always adore about Jimmy's mind is he sees know. the world differently, and it's always instructive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my my perspective is, is the companies, corporations are not in the business of promoting talent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Unless and and even like a CAA promoting their talent, you don't even hear about them, right? So yeah. your Marvel and DC, the minute the creators are more important than the characters. They feel like, all right, we got to get rid of them. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> we ran into that at one point with Harley because we were the face of Harley Quinn for a while. Yeah. You see how that all turned out. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and uh, so they don't have, so Marvel and DC do not want to push creators. Okay. The minute that happens and the creators are important, creators want a little more money. The billion dollar companies don't want to pay $10 more a page. Mm -hmm. um, and then people move on. So, but it used yeah. to be that, okay, they can only move on to image or some other smaller company, you know? Yeah. And when we all started doing Kickstarters, it's like, oh, we don't even need them. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's a nightmare for them. Yeah. Yep. And the other thing is that we don't buy advertising. Right. It's so, right. Why would, why would half of these websites even carry us? Because we're not going to purchase advertising. They need content. We don't need content. We, we, make, we make up content and sell it. Right. We don't need it. So a lot of these guys, the, I, I think the only person that covers every Kickstarter I do is Bleeding Cool. Like they literally, 
the minute I put it in my in the newsletter, they pick it up and they do a quick story. And it's very sweet of them. Yeah. But every everyone else, it's like, uh, you know, you're bothering me, or you know, oh, you don't need you don't need the attention. You're already making money, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, there's also a lot of jealousy involved. Hmm. Yeah. And that's the weird one I run into because I ran into it when I went from you know, work into companies, to publishing, and then back again. And then I started writing, and then no writers would talk about me. <laughs> really? That I was writing. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, you know, and, and now, you know, now I do some coloring, so they should be pissed off at me, too. Oh, geez. Um, You're like a quadruple threat now, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, funny, it, it's funny, because, like I said, a couple of years ago, two two big companies were talking about me and of course it all gets back to me because everybody reports back to me eventually and um yeah, and they were saying uh -huh. and i and they said that the people in charge think i'm a threat to their companies hmm. wow and i said jesus you know i, I put out a couple yeah. of books you know and I, I don't see it but i can see how insecure people might feel that way you know and um so I don't so I don't worry about it like Brian and Eve, you guys just put it in a nutshell. I don't worry about it too much. I like to have it because my only thing that I feel I lack a little oh. bit is my reach to people. So yeah. And I and I find out like after the Kickstarter is done, I have these 20 people that tell me, Oh, I didn't even know you had a Kickstarter, you know. Every and, time. Every time. And yeah. it frustrates me because I'm like, well, how many times am I posting this damn thing? You know? Um, but there's always it always happens and we, we just did Kansas City and we had some of our, uh, uh, the Amanda covers, we had some extras and we put them out for a lot more money than the Kickstarter, like a good $40 more per, yeah. and we sold them all out the first day. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting there, I'm going, okay, it's just, it's just, you know, I, I think that the best PR I get is from you two guys, to be honest, hmm. you know, and, um, and I'm perfectly happy for the rest of my life. <laughs> all three of us pushing each other because yeah, right you know and of course we help other people as well you know yeah. we push other people as well um yeah. but, but I, I i'm learning that that's that's the way it is and and um you know you go it, my office is in a big comic shop right i think yeah. really you know and and you know yeah i'm not on the racks but um you know i watch what people buy and, and right now they're kind of they're kind of tired of a lot of the mainstream stuff and <laughs> The conventional you can't, you can't blame them. You can't blame them. There is nothing, you know, we, the, I think the, the Kickstarters and the Indiegogo and the creator owned comics are the new heavy metal audience. We're, we're the new heavy metal guys. We're yeah. doing, we're doing the work the way we see. Yeah. Right. I mean, heavy metal is not heavy metal because they want to own it. If you do anything, right. they want to own it. Right. That's super, heavy metal. super corporate. Yeah. It's super, so I think we're the new, we're the new, you know, heavy metal, we're, we're publishing what we want and we're listening to our audience. Our audience tells yeah. us by yeah. how many sales, what they want. Yeah. You know, yes. yeah. um, I, I put Amanda's cover. We never even show it. We just say Amanda kind of mystery cover. Yeah. And that's always our bestseller. Wow. You know? and, and I'm always, and Amanda's like, I didn't even do anything yet. And I'm like, yeah, but they know you're going to deliver. And you know, that's the fun of it. Yeah. Um, See, I so we, learn, we learn a lot, you know, we keep learning. Speaking to that exact topic again, instead of doing the press release and trying to court, you know, court the favor of this group, right? We just keep uh, literally. We'll put the time into like, okay, let's continue being more transparent, accountable, right. trustworthy, like the, the the sound business principles. Because I mean, one thing I I know in my career since I've been mainly independent the whole time, our two dogs are just flipping out. I love it. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, but I just know that. Um, uh, we kind of live and die with our audience. And yes. that's always been, that really has always been the relationship. And really, I guess it kind of became clear to me that there was, even with like other parties involved, distributors and stuff, Debbie brought this up. Between us and them might be these other steps. And inside those steps are people that don't care about it as much as we care. Like we care to this day, every day we're all in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like there's, there isn't an off day. There isn't like a coast ever, you know, probably hungrier now than ever. You know, today, yes. you know, I just dashed off, you know, a, a draft of a script that is the most important script I ever wrote in its, you know, today's script. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. So, uh, 
Yeah. I, again, Billy, like that, those, those things, like those measurements, I, I gave up also in the nineties, you know, like I could look at my career and my ability to express, and I could compare it to like Steven Spielberg or Frank Miller. And that's kind of the road to ruin and madness. Like I got mm. into comics just as goofy as it sounds. Like I am very passionate about what it is that I do. I realize it's not war and peace, but it's what I really, really want to do every day. And yeah. there really isn't a measurement for me. You know, the, the job is the satisfaction. It's not the allocates. It's not even people acknowledging you know, if the fans acknowledge their customers, that matters. But it's it really it's always been the work that matters, getting up and doing the work. So I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's Joe's with you, if I can, for a second, because your fans and ours, too, for a certain extent, as, as your Jimmy, they're like family. Right. I mean, that's sworn nation. You know what I mean? It is you. You built an army. It's a palpable it's, thing that I am accountable to every day. It's highly immersive. Yeah. It's very intense. And no pressure. The average comic book creator is up for that or ready for that. You yeah. you don't even know. <laughs> well, I got to ask you guys though, and I get that that we 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 we've attained or we you know we've we we've been in this for a long time. We know everyone, but does it still bother you though that Brian and Jimmy, you two, you guys will have these Kickstarters, you have Indiegogos, these campaigns that are doing six figures. Brian, you multi six figures, right? You're doing four, four or five half a million dollar campaigns a year, but you won't get any coverage on a mainstream comic book site, but they will highlight a book that is selling for a campaign that sells 1,200 copies. Yes. Paid. Or 12 Paid for, baby. It also speaks to, I mean, there's another thing too, I think. There's the payment is involved, but there's also the conventional comics market. And it's all based on an agreement. And it's an agreement among, whether people know it or not, among creatives, among companies, among corporate entities. And it, you know, it, it, serves, it serves a group. And, and that's perfectly and fine, that and valid, so and fair by me. And we're not part of that group, so I'm let just it not part go. of that group. So no, we, we get this. We actually, we actually get dismissed by a certain part of this business yeah. all the time. And I get, I, they do it to my face sometimes, you know. And um, you know, and and it's and it's a very, you know. And you're right, Billy. It's like a book that's selling six thousand. They're doing like whole stories on and. They do six hundred dollars, Jimmy, and we're killing ourselves to do a campaign that sells sixty. But we're not one hundred sixty, six hundred. But we're not doing it for them. No, right. no, we, uh, you know, so so here's the here's the thing, everybody watching has to understand. When we write a comic, we write it for ourselves, right? We're writing the thing we wish we want to read. So yeah. we write yeah, the right. thing we want to read. Yes, and in our head, we know like minds will love this because we're doing some crazy shit. Mm -hmm. That it's so crazy that we're laughing while we're doing it, right? And we know our audience wants to see that, and and so we're creating comics for them. But we, you know, we it starts here, it starts in this head, right? So sure. then, so then, you know, when we put it out, I mean, and people back it, it's just them saying, "Yeah, I get it." You know, I want to be part of that, and yeah. I realize that you know that I have a certain size to my audience, and I know there's a steady amount of people. It, I'm very happy with them. I'm always welcome for more, but I know that they're there. And because I, I don't do what you got, like I jump all over the place with ideas all the time, but right. I can't help it. Right, I mean, Jay and I did a couple, but I'm always doing something different. Yeah. But that's the way my brain works. And yeah. I'm so Ooh. happy people are out there to support that. Yes. And it, you know, and my, at the end of the day, what these websites do, let's be honest, most of them are dime a dozen. All they're doing is dumping, Stuff so people can go back on and read their things. I don't know how many people actually read these damn articles that they're putting That's up. True. Oh, I, well, the, I think that I think, I think the, the testaments book. out there is that it yeah. shows that someone like Brian is being ignored, and you, yes. for the most part, like I said, yeah. you get you get when you launch, you get some, you get a certain amount of, you know, um, coverage. I get death threats though. That's okay. That disappears, I that. Right, <laughs> but, but look at Brian's not getting any coverage. It's okay. No, no, it's it's. Uh, it's, it's uh, it seems to but be again, hey, dude, you're, you dude, you I mean, you know, we're brothers, right? And I'm not actually talking like, you know, we're alone in a room here, but like for me, I'm not looking for validation from others. I'm just not. I just right. not. Like, you know, what'll happen though, it's, it is kind of funny what Jimmy says is like, 
whether y'all know it or not, like I've consulted with major corporations on Kickstarters. They want to know what's the secret sauce. And, yes. and I yes. have friends and contemporaries who who I help and have gone on to like to great acclaim and it some shall be to remain nameless. And I don't mind because I'm just sort of it's a give back principle. You know, I've right. I've benefited, we've benefited, so I'm happy to give back. But like I I promise you, um, it is much more important me to me that peers or customers or some contemporaries in the business might appreciate the work or what we've done or have accomplished has right. a lot more meaning than just, you know, the average rank and file come and go, go in our industry. Cause here's another thing we're not talking about. We're all three decade plus survivors in comics. We people, there are not a lot of us who like are silly enough to stick with it. You know, yeah. That's it. I'm and an old man. I'm a very old man. Especially so. us indie <laughs> guys. Well, no, no, no. seriously, if you look at it though, us indie guys, and, and getting back to it, it just it kind of bothers it's me. It's a certain kind of indie work. Like, like we are not the trendy indie man. You no. gotta get it. No. And yeah. that's okay. Like again, like I understand where I come from. I know by design the work that I put out will be reviled by a great majority of the conventional industry. <laughs> I've known that since the beginning. I felt it, and I don't care. Like, right. why yeah. would I care? <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I mean, they're not even I, – I, I don't want those people reading my book. If they – you know, they, they're like, let them let them read uh, – you know, let them – I don't know. Let them do poetry somewhere else. I don't know what the hell it's Whatever like. it is. I, yeah. I'm just like – I'm like, I want my crowd – Look, my crowd knows that eventually there'll be two girls making out and they'll be topless somewhere. Right. In there. Um, somebody's, <laughs> head, somebody's head will get blown off. Thank you, Billy. Um, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> there's, there's always some crazy stuff that I wish I was able to do when I was doing the mainstream work that I'm actually doing in my work, you know. Yeah. And um, I'm proud to put mature audiences on, on yeah. my book. I, I'm did so happy. Did you present that, Jimmy, real quick? Did, did you present that to them, to the corporates of, like, when you're doing Harley? Like, let's do this. And okay, like, yeah, so we're not doing that. Real, real quickly, they they asked the man and I after we got off Harley for a while to come back and do the Harley Quinn Birds of Prey Black Label book. They said we can do anything we want. Yes, yeah, Black we, Label. Right. So we handed in the first two pages, and it's a dream sequence where uh, where Batman's in a speedo and he's serving drinks to Harley and Ivy. Right. <laughs> awesome. Right away, they call us up. You can't have Batman in a speedo. I'm like, it's a dream, and they're like, can't do it. Right. Huh. And then Amanda had Harley topless at some point. She's at the beach topless. And they're like, can't do it, right? And then we, and every every other thing is like, wait, you told us we could do anything. And then we do the fourth issue and there's a fight between Harley and and uh, and Joker. Like we we actually have her cutting him up with a knife and, and ripping him to shreds. And they're like, it's too violent. Mm. And, and a man is like, why did we even do this? Like yeah. everything, everything they told us we can do, they could. They said we can't, and it was, you know, the Amanda drew the four issues, and and it's a beautiful and it's a fun book, but we had to work around everything, and it was so frustrating because Amanda could have done four books for Kickstarters, and we would have sold right. the hell out of them. And right. if it was yeah. cool, if it was called Girl with a Switchblade, it would have sold like crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah, first play Girl, forget yeah, it. Yeah. Blade, like, yeah, whatever. But, like, so we, we learned the lesson there. You know, we learned the lesson that, like, okay, they don't really want us to be us. They just, yeah. they want us, um, you know, and, and at one point I was told, you know, like, they didn't want to put me on anything anymore. I don't do anything for DC other than Color Amanda's covers. Um, but I but I pitched them, you know, we pitched them Power Girl. We pitched them Zantana with Amanda drawing. No interest. Huh. Well, when I hear that, I think, okay, that means they don't want us there, right? Because. Mm -hmm. You're not going to, why would you turn down Amanda on Power Girl or Amanda right. on Zantana? Yeah. Right? Why would you turn? So, yeah. so you kind of like, so I, I did my time there and I always, at the same time, I did other stuff, obviously. I, I've been doing the Kickstarters. Um, but I'm realizing like, eh, you know, it's a fun place to visit once in a while, mm -hmm. like a relative. You know, <laughs> you go there and you hang out for the weekend, you do a cover or two and you get the hell out of there. Um, <laughs> but I look at what they're putting out and I'm like, okay, none of this is for me. Like right. I, look at, right. I look at that wall and I'm going, okay, there's 18 Batman books, but I don't care. How many times are you going to fight the Joker? It's, yeah. It just feels yeah. all old to me. And I am old because I've seen it, yeah. but it feels like it's freshly old, which is another weird yeah. thing. You well, know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm a mainstream comics reader and have been, but I do feel that those companies that we all grew up on, they just abandoned the reader. I don't know what yeah. the agenda is any longer. And yeah. 
Yeah. And well, they're checking boxes, right? They're checking boxes with their content. So, so when you do that, it's not about, it's not about the books or the stories. It's about checking boxes. Yeah. And again, they're corporate. So all they care about is how many we sold. Look, let me tell you when DC and Marvel put out their regular comics and every comic has four or five covers, you know, they're looking at us to see what the hell they're doing. Oh yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, and and you know they're in trouble when that's happening. By the way, mm-hmm. that, that's absolutely true. Yeah, I've seen and that's so also much. The validation that you just were asking for when they start copying what we're doing. Oh yeah, look how long before validation. Marvel and DC Don't does worry a Kickstarter. about your the blog right. and all that crap. That's right. Yeah, yeah, but it gets frustrating. It does. You know and I'm what? going back to the main. I know. I I'm know. I, I, I wish I was more excuse content. Me. Excuse like me. Can I just a second. What do we come on time? <laughs> When he works hard, like you work hard. To win. And he doesn't. What do we tell him? He doesn't win? When he doesn't win. Uh, we tell him right, life's I'm, not fair, right? Yeah, life sucks. Life Deb, can I step fair. in? Deb, can I do some therapy with Billy right now? No, so, no, no. Well, well, he yes, right, you no. can. Well, he okay. wrestled. So it's, Billy, so, Billy. No, no, listen he's like, to what he's got to say. Billy, you're successful. Therapy. You're successful. Yeah. You're doing great. Yeah. yeah you your know. audience loves you. And... uh so what else do you want? You look, you got a hot wife next to you. What the hell do you want, man? No, I yeah, know, right. I know. No, he, wants this. he wants a pat on the back. Oh, true. Like, boy. I don't want an attaboy. That's what you're saying, though. Right, you well, want the industry to give you a pat on well, the back. It's just frustrating. It sounds like the people that you don't even respect, you want acknowledgement from. Oh, yeah. See, you're that's, right. that's I don't good. really want it, but it just bothers yes, you do, and you need I, to stop. <laughs> this is so entertaining to me. I can't tell you. I, it just so it just it just really? I'll just sh- we're going way over. It just bugs the shit out of me of so how hard. Like, go. well, look at Brian. How hard you guys have worked. With it doesn't bother. Bill, 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 Bill. Bill, Bill, Bill. But I guess Bill. it proves that we don't need them, right? We don't need them. Yeah. That's what I'm, you know. Do you know why we're not upset about it and we don't give a flying f? You're too busy spending your money. No, <laughs> you know? no, no, no. But from day one, we were outcasts. From right. day one, yes. nobody wanted evil learning. Nobody right. wanted Lady yeah. Death. Right. Nobody took anything that Brian Polito created seriously. You know, nobody you. took yeah. what we did, what Chaos Comics did seriously. But we were a fucking juggernaut and we did it. And Coffin Comics is doing it. And we don't give a shit it's what true. anybody thinks. Brian Polito is telling the stories he wants to tell. He's telling the stories from his heart, and he's putting my that fucked up out. heart, <laughs> my, his fucked up black Sorry. heart. I love it so much, dude. But, you better make out with her right now. Oh my yeah, god, we're doing it. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> um, but and All right, we got a stupid chat. That's what it is. We yeah, got. That's what it real. is. That's it. Don't worry about out there. There's I know. I know. There. It just bothers me when I see these people. It it just drives me. I can tell that it bothers Billy, you. Billy, stop it. it. Here's our motto. Coffee Comics motto. This is our motto. It's this great hip hop song. It's um, win. Win, 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 win. Fuck everything else. Win, 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 win. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Damn, I thought it was Tennyson. We got to super chat real quick. Brian Polito from the great Brian Blevins, Jimmy's best friend. 90s brought video games and cartoons. Were either of you approached back then to make a video game or cartoons like Image Comics, i.e. Wildstorm, Spawn, Ness, Wildcats, S, Dragon, Toon? Brian, were you ever approached by Heroclix? Uh, I think we were right on the verge of something. On So, so uh, my former company, Chaos Comics, did ultimately fail, went into a bankruptcy. And we were actually approached by that group and we were making a deal, but I actually called him up and told him, I'm like, look, uh, uh, three weeks from now, we're not going to be in business. I can't take your money. So that was mm. that. Yeah, we, 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 had, we sold the pro four times to be either a film or an animated show. And always at the last minute, they're like, wait, we can't make this. I mean, there is an, there's even a video that we did. Amanda did uh, an animated short, and um, but we're out again selling it because maybe the boys made it a little easier, right? Yeah. In, in, the, in the 21st anniversary of the pro, maybe this time it'll stick. But I don't give a shit. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't care. You know, I, it, all that the cartoons and the movies. We you know we had a Jane show yeah. for a while. You know, all that stuff. It, it's great, but it it 
it's it's like enjoy the moment of it, mm. but it doesn't mean anything in the big picture of things. And Billy, you're looking for respect from people you don't respect. Deb Deb nailed it on the head. Yeah. It's like it's like the a lot of these people are so up their own ass that they right. can't right. they, they can't look at other people's work and enjoy it. And back to Brian, you know, Brian, you were heavy metal, man. You were heavy metal comics, like you know, Evil Ernie and Lady Death. I mean, it was all like it was all like I always looked at it as um Brian's doing world building in hell. Yeah. You know? And <laughs> and nobody was doing world building in hell. And you owned hell. You know, I mean the only thing I could say is you know, the only thing I, I, that's what I thought the comics were. I, I thought like everything was on fire in the backgrounds all the time. And I'm like, okay, it's it's hell. And I just thought I just thought that only the people that can have fun in that place are gonna really appreciate it because you have these other guys. Look, anyone that you know, they get they run to Shakespeare. They run. They try to be like people. They're not. They're trying to be like uh, you know, uh, like I don't know. They're trying to come off as smarter or whatever it is, or they're looking for respect. So they take on projects that mean nothing to them except that they might get attention. And those are the people that age really quick. Yeah, and yeah. also expire. Their work expires. And and so I, I you know, a lot of times, you know, I. I love what all you guys do. And I think it's I think it's alive. It feels alive when you get the books. They feel vibrant and alive. And I feel Main Street is kind of dead. It's kind of corporate, you know, corporate yeah. gloss over. Even when they make those shiny covers, I'm like, not as shiny as the books we do. Sorry. Yeah, you know, um, these are the same people though that that champion the the big two, the big corporate, the multi-billion dollar corporations. Right. They are. When COVID hits and the, everything shuts down and these multi-billion dollar corporations issue out a pencils down order mm. to their creatives. That's their the problem. That we cannot pay you an inker for $100 a page or a letterer for right. doing you know, $20 a word balloon. You can't work. These co corporations are worth millions of dollars, billions of dollars. Right. And they shut the industry down. And then you yeah. have a certain segment of people that are still championing these corporate companies. Yeah, Marvel they don't zombies. Care about zombies. Their, their creatives, yeah. right? And, and then yeah. treat the creatives like shit. We've all done this. You, we've all done stuff for the big two. You know yeah. we have, right? And it just drives me nuts. So and that's why so it just. And I, I know it doesn't have to, Stop right? Right. Circling back. I, I know. I am very blessed. We're very blessed. With, right. Look, yes. Billy. I, I, Billy, I know it's important to it's you. Unfair. Right. I, look, Billy. I know it's important to you. And, and when I was working at fair. Marvel in DC, I always made sure fair. there was a project for you. But That's at the true. end of the day, it's just work for hire. Who gives a shit? Right. And things. You no. Know? You know, we we are all blessed. All three. All. Five very of blessed. us. Five of us are very right. blessed, including Amanda, right. who's sick with the flu. So that would be six. Six of us are all very blessed. Yeah. We, 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 we have nothing to complain about, right? We don't. No, you're and looking I, for things I, to am complain I looking about. At, am I looking for, am I turning it to yes. my mother? Absolutely. Oh, shit. Francisco, I'm turning to my mother. I think a little therapy might be in. Yeah. A so, really, right. the, the mean, hardest, big Italian woman. <laughs> the, Billy, the hardest thing to do was to yeah. be really present Yes. Right here, right now, in the moment that you are, and just be really grateful for it. Gratitude. Tomorrow, we don't know if tomorrow is going to be there. You every day. Right. But right here, right now, Absolutely. enjoy what you have, sure. create with joy, and get it out into the world. We don't know what tomorrow is going to be. Billy, you're old. Right. I'm old. Brian, speak for yourself. Jay, I'm the old. Old. I'm the old. Oh, real quick, we got a super We got a super jet. Jay Lee, uh, Brian. I remember meeting Brian at a Texas show. Uh, he and Steven gave Kelsey Shannon, brilliant uh, creator, Steven, uh, and myself so much advice. Now, Again, I, re I remember that con. Character. I remember that con because it was, if am I correct, uh, Jay, when it was in a church. In a dry oh, town. Yeah, that was a great. <laughs> so of course you weren't there. I was there, but of course we had to. We there was a local comic shop about a quarter mile away. There was a pay per view boxing event. We newspapered up all the walls, and we certainly had our friend bring in uh, like a whole bunch of cases of beer and liquor 
because there is no way we were not going to defile that dry town. <laughs> and, and, and you just took it over. You're outlaws again. Outlaws again. It's just a little mischievous. Just a little. <laughs> uh, we have Randy Howell. Let's let me find his. Uh, where is that? Gee whiz! Oh my god! A lot. I, I'm, I apologize, guys. I'm oh, going. I'm kind of hanging on my friends. And I'm missing all these chats. Chimney crickets. It's okay, Bill. Why didn't you just click on it? It was right there. It's up there, but I can't click. Look. So, Billy Tucci, I have a challenge for you. Yes, sir. Ooh. New Year's resolution. Here it comes. The therapy's coming. Well, I, I invite you to just give up all that stuff. Mm. Just give up. Just give that piece up. <laughs> I know. It hurts me when my friends get hurt. I, I you know, I well, take great hurt. pride in being part of a fellowship of all the accomplishments that you guys do. Of I, And I literally think that the 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 five of us right here and Amanda who's sick right now, we, we have literally changed the face of, we turned a page in comics history. Mm -hmm. We have, and we've changed the face of comics, the, the work that we've done and, and you guys and all that you've done, especially you, Jimmy and Amanda too, in the mainstream, that there'd be no Harley Quinn movie. There'd be no suicide squad films without Jimmy. Let's be freaking honest. They, they wouldn't. So it kind of hurts me. Here, I'll look here, here he is. I got it. Randy Howe. Uh, oh, Zambi Salmon expense is 40 grand. Thank you, bro. Thank you, Randy. Our little zombie book. Hang on. <laughs> I, I like this doom, which I think yeah. Billy needs to draw a She Kills the Marvel Universe comic. Yeah. I love that. No, but yeah. That sounds like fun. Again, and I get a little off the rails, but it kind of bugs me. Of and, and we do work so hard. Right now we're working, right? We're hanging out, having a good time. But but I mean, again, I work hard to work hard. I, I don't yeah. know. Yes. I yes. just work hard to work hard. I don't mind <laughs> working hard. No, There's a good like outcome. It. Well, that's just it. Now, when we're working hard, we're doing it for ourselves and the people who we are now beholden to. Right. And our not yeah. these. I know, but idiots. it just bugs me because of I, I don't know. It just well, it needs to. You start. know, Billy, it, it does look. It does bug me when I work on Jonah Hex for 125 issues, and then they make a movie that mm. honestly mm. It, it's crap. But yeah. the good news is my name's not on that movie, so That's right. I win, you know. Um, Find you know, the silver lining. Well, Jimmy did, yeah, I mean, Jimmy did 56, 57. How many issues did Jonah Hex? 125. Oh, jeez. Right? Oh, my God. Oh, I, I apologize. Yeah. I miss it. 125 issues of Jonah Hex. There would be, the, their film would not be there without him. I know. No, and, and they told me to my face, that, that Warner Brothers told me to my face, we don't want you involved. They said that. They said, we're using your books as inspiration. And I said, well, I have some experience in film. And I, if you mm. need me to go over to screenplay, I've written some screenplays. Mm. And they said, nope. And it was it, the only the only thing that happened was one of the producers felt like really guilty. And he mm. flew me out, me and Justin out to New Orleans to see them shoot some of it. But he sent me the screenplay. And when I told him, I said, look, I read it on the plane and it's terrible. And it's got lots of problems. And. I can't believe you're shooting this because it's actually it just it's just not great. And he was like, "Yeah, but you know, whatever. We'll make it work." And then they didn't make wow. it work, you know. But at the end of the day, like they did invite me to the premiere to fly me out to premiere, but I didn't want my name and I didn't want my face in front of it. So I said, "No, not interested." So they take that his his character that he creates, Tallulah Black, is the right. Well, yeah, the I, can't, I can't get. I tried to get that character back. I mean, what a, yeah. Oh, I mean, but I will say DC gave me back. I got GI Zombie back. I got Twilight wow. Experiment. I got Monolith. I got oh, cool. the Resistance. They oh, gave yeah. me back a whole lot of properties I did for them, and that was pretty cool. So yeah. I, I, you know, one to the surprising. WB execs that I deal with, that was kind of cool of them to do, and I have those properties. Um, but you know, it's it's these are corporations, so it comes down to single people. Look, they didn't want me involved with the movie. I. On some level, I get it. I I, I don't want them involved with my comic, yeah, so right. you know. So I kind of like you know. At some point, with the, with the Birds of Prey, they actually took you know actual scenes that we wrote and did, mm -hmm. and they flew us out, and we got to meet Margo and everybody, and it was very nice. But at the end of the day, you know, they throw me a couple of bucks, and it's pretty much it's it's sort of like a little tip of a hat going. Thanks a lot. By the way, if you noticed, your name is one of the last ones in the credits. Um, oh. Enjoy. You know, well, in our own little trials in uh, in the movie land, what we really realized really quick is their game is they got to be the author because yes. that's where the power and the money yes. is. So, of course, you have to be marginalized. 
and yeah. using your source material is like it just makes it easier for them mm -hmm. so in every time like you jimmy like every time i've tried to insert myself in some <laughs> somehow it's true it, right anytime we try to insert ourselves meaningfully you know given our backgrounds and stuff that we're reproached i won't know your, your background is in film you were doing films when i met you Dude, you were I've, working on it, films you know that's he's a director or a producer yeah, I've actually handed those guys like finished. I, I definitely won't get into the details of this, but we, we were at the end of a major thing that uh, deal that happened and okay. we had a finished screenplay and, and I promise you it was solid, but just, but just on authorship alone, they wouldn't, they would not even crack it. And, yeah, and I mean, they went on to spend no joke, a million dollars in multiple different groups of like the next big thing. And it's, and and they blew it. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, and and oh Billy, look, god. look. I had random acts of violence come out. It's based yeah. movie. I did. I didn't get any press. Nobody, nobody wanted to talk to me about it. At the end of the day, I realized, okay, you know, that that's that's that, and uh, I can't worry about it so much. I do worry about my paper quality on my next book. I, I'm checking <laughs> out some paper stocks, and I am worried. I want to make sure the spot varnish lines up perfectly. So <laughs> I'm kind of worried about that a tiny bit. Are you doing a 70-pound or a 60-pound interior? What are you doing? Well, you know what I mean, though. It's like these are things I can control. Right. Yeah. I can yeah. control these Kickstarter books. And when people get them, because, look, we're not charging $3.99. We're not charging $4.99 for right. these books. We're charging right. a decent amount of money. Yeah. But I know we, we're all the same. When we hold something, it feels like money. That's right. Like if you, can, <laughs> you can tell when something feels better then yeah. you know i look at the marvel comics the interior stock is this is the same cover stock it's the same yeah. paper That's sure right. yeah yeah and, it, oh, and they're yeah. charging five six dollars for those books and i'm like okay you know what i need to show them up i need to do better books Easy. better looking books get some great covers yep. you know that kind of stuff billy owes me a cover anyway so you know yeah, I, 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 I thought i had time to do the cover. you do you have time but it's <laughs> but what, I, what I'm saying is we 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 can we have a chance to do a better product for them and give everybody a better product. You That's what that was his head on his on his light. I'm so stressed out. You have no idea. <laughs> I'm gonna write an article on how you got to do a cover for me, and then we'll see who picks it up. That you did not get my cover yet. No, Billy, you still you still, have, you still have a month. You still have a month. Uh, evil one right now. Evil one, thank you for the uh, two dollar super chat. He says, "Hail and sworn to my friends, happy 29th to she." That's 29th. right. Junior, it's she's 29th anniversary. 29 years ago. Yes, he was talking about before this. Oh yeah, that's right. He was. I know. What's that? I, well, I, you I, know. Talked to, I talked to Randy today. Oh boy! Where is it? Oh, I know. Timmy's all over the place. He's he was over here. He was over there. So I thought I I would have I, I would have loved you been on the show. He's on. I know, but yeah, it's what are you talking about? Yeah. I don't you know, know. Do you not have Jimmy's number? <laughs> I do, but not, I don't want to bother. You not called Jimmy directly last week. Check the, check the men's room. It's in. It's on the wall. <laughs> check the men's room. Oh, the scrap um, bar on McDougal yeah, Street. Look, I, I was enjoying just watching you guys. So I got to say, I was like kind of an, you know, I was kind of enjoying you two chatting away. I came <laughs> in a little late though, so. Uh, but well, um, we love you guys. Brian Fran, going for 2023, what do we have going on right now? Yes. Let's go. Tell it us. I, it's really simple. It's too much. We always have stuff. So I'd rather spend this time doing the following. Jimmy Palmiotti, thank you so much for being there at all the times. And you have always been super generous with your time and your insights. I always respect, admire, always look up to you. And uh, uh, no joke, uh, I always, I've, I just, even though we're friends and stuff, I just always view you on like you're on a different plane of understanding shit. So I always appreciate your insights and your. Well, friends. I adore, I adore all four of you. You know that. Um, I adore, adore you guys to death. And uh, you know, I, I, if we're not here helping our friends, who the hell, what the hell are we good for? You yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah, that. I mean, yeah. as as time goes on too, you 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 realize that more and more. I also want to acknowledge, um, for my part, uh, the enduring legacy of the partnership of uh, Billy and Deborah. Uh, yes. you know, between between Billy's tenacity oh, yeah. and Deborah's smarts, it's a dangerous combination. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're so, a good yeah. time. Thank you. We're a good time. <laughs> if you well, don't you know, we're, all, we're, all, 
we all have one thing in common. We're all a little bit, little, little like troublemakers. We are, like, yeah. in a, in a, you know, and um, was. but we actually, but I think we, what we have in common is a sense of humor. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's in the work too. It's in there. It's in the work, you know. Um, well, I'd and I'd like to put this out there for this year, San Diego Comic Con for a panel. Um, I remember our couple, you know, combo couples panel. With, it was all debauchery. It was, yeah, it, it was fun. debauchery <laughs> and how we met <laughs> and laughing. But I think though people came up to me afterwards wanting to know how we actually did all this. So I'll, I'll send an email out. But maybe you guys be entertained the idea and Terry and Robin and uh, Jeff and Bajay again uh, yeah. to actually do a real comic like how we actually made comics. Because sure. it kind of it kind of boiled down to how did you beautiful brilliant women end up with us comic book nerds? <laughs> and Jimmy was kind of on the on the on the other side because <laughs> Amanda was like nerds with us guys. So that's true. But maybe we could do a panel and I'll I'll put it out there of, of how to actually build an empire or build a a whatever, lifestyle whatever or, it is we build yeah, yeah, well, yeah well, shit we've <laughs> we don't have to put a name to yeah, it so, to build a great lifestyle to actually how to couple sexy work together to to make a living doing what you love oh yeah you're like, doing great jimmy yeah, i mean you're doing great billy i'm, I'm jimmy she called <laughs> me jimmy. let me tell you something her, you. Her, her you're great was jimmy no, I mean, no and good. you called me jimmy that time remember that we had a fight and she called him Jimmy. Flirty Flirty Flirty. <laughs> Francisco was sitting there. It's all about Jimmy. Jimmy. Her old boyfriend. We had an argument. So, she was Jimmy. No, no, she, you she son of a bitch. Who the F is Jimmy? I didn't know you yet. I can't you know what would be a fun panel that they wouldn't pick up is the real story of exhibiting, us guys exhibiting at San Diego Comic Con 94 to 98. Holy. Oh. <laughs> and the subtitle is How I Made Someone Cry. That's right. <laughs> that, that would be um, how I got in a fight, how I triggered people's schizophrenia, like all that stuff. <laughs> Jimmy you had Jimmy really had a fire his motorcycle in the middle fire, of the show. Fire you know. clothes and was running around with a fireman's outfit on. <laughs> I had a motorcycle. Oh. It was nuts. It was nuts. Brian had to go to the hospital because he cut his finger. And all oh, I'm thinking is, true. we got to set up this, this booth before we have to start paying somebody else to set up this booth. Brian and Stephen Hughes beat the shit out of some guys who stole yeah, Stephen's art. I, I, I remember one story. night, Brian and, and, and Franny, you, you guys were with your whole crew, and I saw you guys. I walked by, and you guys turned to me and said, hey, we're all getting tattoos. You want to come? And I, I was <laughs> what? Like, and I was like, what? <laughs> and we did. Do you want to well, see you it? Got, yeah. we, we, were you getting the evil Ernie? Weren't you getting like evil Ernie or, or something? I don't when you remember. Well, uh, I think it was actually the girls were all fired. All the girls up. went. <laughs> oh, we're okay, like, okay. Jimmy. I, I remember that because you're like, "Come on, we're all gonna get tattoos," and I'm like, "Yeah, I, I no, you know." <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it this year. Yeah, and right. we'll, we'll get John. We have to do a pre-San Diego Comic Con show, and we'll bring John Ramita on because I don't think um, what's his name from Kiss. What's his name? Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons will will come on when Gene Simmons. Were you there when we all went out? And Gene Simmons is macking on my wife like a ah, like well, a, like, yeah. a he's, he's like a lizard. He was like yeah. a serpent. Like I, I, he's an odd. I, he's an odd guy. He he came up to me. Somebody introduced me to him, and he goes, "I know who you are." Oh. I, got, I was like, "Okay, so, well, I know who you are, so we're even." <laughs> but I, did, I think I, I did a panel with his kid. I think I did a panel with his kid. Oh, oh, neat. I, he got, I he got, said the most busted, romantic right? thing I've ever heard was Brian Polito yelling at Gene Simmons, going, Simmons, get away from my wife. <laughs> 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 Yelled at. He's all over her too. Ninety four. We're like twenty five yeah. years old. He had he had the carbone wig on, whatever he had from. <laughs> Look, did you yell at him? So what did do you? Yell everybody at was all over the both of you guys. Oh so my god! Yeah, cut it out. He cut was it out. Everybody. The everybody. way I was chewing on the stir of my drink. Oh, get it, girl! Okay, you, were, you were making you were making little knots with the cherry stems, weren't you? That, <laughs> that was me. I could I could do that. Oh, shit. Fran, I Fran, Fran, I could so. Can I not do that or what? That's, that's a very disturbing. You give me a cherry and a stem, I'll tie it in a knot and get it right to you. Oh boy! You know, if you're 20 years old, hey, that's a, I think it. that's a I think that's a stretch goal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> cherry knots, my, my Billy. 
Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you only have to make 700 of them. Oh, wow. <laughs> Well, All it's right. time for our thank you since we yes. got thank you. Oh, so take it over. Without <laughs> Brian and Fran and Jimmy, Billy and I would not be here. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is that simple. So mm -hmm. thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And knowing that you guys always have our backs means the world to us. It really does. So mwah, mwah, mwah. You. Mm -hmm. So I get to do it too. I get to say it again because I, I like to tell you guys. My favorite people to see, my favorite people to hang out with, and some of the few creators that I feel like, oh, now that I found them, here's the oasis where I can be a complete asshole and have some fun. <laughs> and, you know, and I, and I don't, it looks like I let my guard down a lot, but anybody that knows me knows I don't. Mm -hmm. I only, only around close friends. I, I, I play the light, easy guy, but I actually, I actually have to be in this very special place. And the four of you are the special place and that I, that I feel so comfortable with. Like, I feel like I got friends and comrades, you know, like I, I, in the business. And um, and I'm just like, I, you know, I, I'm so thrilled that I was able to help a little bit, like with the Kickstarter stuff. And mm -hmm. you know, oh, just a little bit. Didn't you? Just, just yeah, a little just, bit? You know, Holy just, shit. What the but, but, you know, I mean, it, it's like, it's, it's just... Um, I feel like I feel like I had it hand in like you know what this is like our second yes like, this is another like roller coaster ride in a business we're like Absolutely. we're going up that big hill you know yeah. and um but, yeah. but what's so amazing is how brave you are right and Brian and Fran mm. I, I, I can I say that Both of them. right remember how the 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 fear but yeah. Jimmy you are so brave you're the one that took that head on. When it was well, when you so when you really fail a lot, you 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 don't you don't worry about that. Like I yeah. fail all the yeah. time, and I'm happy that people remember my successes. But there's tons of things I I failed at, and and I and I continue to mm -hmm. on some level. Um, but I don't really care, yeah. and um, so I don't really uh, you know I learned that I learned that failing stuff is like my strength that I can walk through a failure, no yeah. problem. And so, so it's actually made the successes that much sweeter for me, um, you know, but, but you do have to look, I, you know, I have around a thousand comics that I worked on it. I'm not too proud of, you know, um, I find little things I like about them, but I'm like, yeah, I, hate, I had to take that job because I was taking care of my mom and all that kind of stuff. Right. Sure, yeah. Um, but when, you know, I, I, I did some books that failed and I was like, okay, well now I know they don't like that shit. So got to go on to something else, you know? Um, so that that's just navigating the business. But with the Kickstarter, I smelled something fun. And like I, I was like, wait a minute, I'll be able to do this. And let's be honest, guys, the next goal, right, is to just do this on our website and forget about any of these platforms. Yeah. To have the people actually feel comfortable just coming to us and buy the book straight when we yep. announce it. That is the next, that's the next level. Yep. Not giving away that five, ten percent kind of yep. stuff. Right now, yeah. now and, 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 um, yeah. right now. So we have Eleven. next week. So. You know, I I tried it with I had that I had that Adam Hughes cover for the Pop Kill, and I made a thousand copies, and we sold out in a day. Boom! We did that through the website. That's awesome. And I was so excited because yeah. I was like, oh my That's god, serious just, minutes, yeah, yeah. And I mailed them all out that weekend, so everybody got them <laughs> next week. And it was like, and I was like, okay, that's the real future is how we figure this out. Yeah, because. Yes, the the in the the templates that they use make everything very easy for us, you know. Mm -hmm. But one day we're not even going to need it anymore. Mm. The three of us will own a website that just that's where they can go. And yeah. we just get, you know, we, we cut out the middleman again, and uh, and go. But one day we'll figure it out. I'm not a tech guy, so I'm like the last guy to do it. I mean, oh, it's you... all it's all part of the future, brother. Yeah. Yeah. It's all happening. We need those We're young happy. people that have those minds that, you know, yeah. we all have them in our lives. You, Billy, you have your own kids doing it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. we're we're already planning it. So, yeah. yeah. Well, guys, we love you all, Brian, Fran, Jimmy, uh, missing Amanda. Amanda. We love you, Amanda, yes. who's up there. I wish she, she was Dan here right Mendoza now. Dan Mendoza again. Thank Dan, you. Dan, thank you for coming in. Thanks, Dan. Uh, working on on uh, Lady Death and um, Zombie. Uh, uh, Tramp. 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 Sorry, forgive me. I know. I'm, uh, no. You're done. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Good night, Gracie. Guys, great night. Great <laughs> times. Guys, like I said, we love you all. Looking forward to seeing you guys again this summer. Yeah. All right, Jimmy, yes. Debbie, and I are going to rent the house down. In yeah, Florida we see, we see you. Uh... Well, yes. 
I have it on the calendar. It's the 10th. Yep. Yep. Come on down. See if we get a couple of our friends down. Hang out. We got a pool, right? We got a pool. It's here. We have a very nice pool. Yeah, we got a whole week. Airbnb. I'm going to start dieting, Deb. I'm going to start dieting. <laughs> evil one. Oh, geez. Look at evil one, Brian. Where is he? Of course. You are done. You're like done, Billy. You're done. Stick a fork in him. He's done. I hope the Rangers is lost. So, all right, guys, love you all. God bless you guys. Peace, love comics, coffin comics. You guys fucking rock. Jimmy, you say paper films. I got yelled at for cursing all night. I've been cursing. It was wonderful at my mother's birthday party. Like your mother's birthday. She, she curses. She curses. My mother in law curses night, like a crooked It's like a modern I love Lucy yeah. going on, you know? It's like, all right. There you go. Love you guys. Night, love you all. Night, you guys have a great night. Hey, hey, real quick. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Real quick. Don't leave. No, real quick. No, 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 stop. Good stop. night. Did oh. you see my doctor chilling with Dr. Zayas? Do you see him talking about yeah. it? Yeah. It's going on there. <laughs> How freaking great is that? that all right, guys. Have a good night. Exactly. I got to do my, my brand. Good night, everybody. Have a great night. Have a great week. Peace, love. <laughs> Comics. Peace comics. comics. Peace uh, out. Spring is upon us. It is. Spring is sprung over here. Stop talking. Shh. I'm trying <laughs> to find a, how to get out, right? Now he's got all these damn gee whiz. He's got all these out. Uh, how to say goodbye. All right, guys. Good night. <laughs> I'm I'm good night. Good say good night. Where's good the night. end screen? I'm out. Wow. I don't do this. You hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Pop XP. If you haven't already, make sure to click that subscribe button and also click the bell for notifications when we go live and we upload some awesome new content. Also, don't forget to head on over to Twitter and follow us at the Pop XP and over on Instagram at the Pop XP. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you soon.